All right, welcome back, everybody. This is the 1 to 90 series. I'm Burrito. Uh, we are currently at the end of Tansari Point Station, and we're going to be leaving and landing on Tatooine, where I'm going to give some getting starting tips and start the legacy. But there's two things from last stream that I want to go over. Um, at the beginning of this one, if I can get the card card ass guard not to walk in me, because it's creepy. But uh, the first thing is last, last time you all saw me get to level 10 and allocate some expertise points into the squad command tree and unlock advanced tax tactics which is effectively tactics mark four now if there's any budding officers looking to do the same as me you might run into a problem while doing this which is specifically if you try and activate tactics mark four <laughs> you'll get an error maybe you can't see it because of the menu so let me and let me bring the chat box out I try to activate Tactics Mark IV, it says, too tired. You don't have enough action points. Um, that's because we literally don't have enough action to fire this ability. So you can see that with my current equipped gear and buffs, I have 1,771 action total. You need 1,100 to activate Tactics Mark IV. <laughs> but now some of you may sing be asking burrito you had it activate last stream how did you do that well yeah you remember how i was using favor of the elders well you know that gives me 20 constitution and 20 stamina which increases my action to 1271 which is just enough to activate tactics mark four <laughs> so if you're going to do this Make sure you activate Favor of the Elders or similar Constitution Stamina buff in order to be able to even turn it on. It's a great buff, definitely worth it. But just in case if you're confused, that's why. The second part is you notice we're in, in, in Aldra's office and not in front of the Handsome Han Solo. That's because there is one quest on the station that I didn't do. That quest you get from over here from this Celestin named Garrick. Now, uh... He, he, Garrick is a very stealthy rebel operative, and you can tell that he's a rebel operative because he's wearing rebel battle armor pants. The goofball. But anyways, he won't talk to us. We've talked to him before. That's because once you are able to do his quest, if you talk to the Imperial agent in the cantina and do that quest before this one, you won't be able to do this quest. The only difference between the two quests is the rewards. They have It's the same mission where you go to Gamma Station, go to the data um, terminal, download the data, and bring it back. The Imperial Officer will give you 200... Yeah, 200 Imperial Faction. The Garrick will give you 200 Rebel Faction. The Imperial Officer rewards you with a level 7 Carbine. Garrick rewards you with a level 7 Pistol. So if you have a roleplay reason that you don't want to help the Imperials for your character or you just don't want to, Garrick is right here. Alternatively, if you'd rather have the pistol reward than the carabine reward, Garrick is right here. Don't worry about faction points. It's very easy to get enough faction points to join either side once you land on the ground. In fact, doing the legacy quest will naturally get us enough to join one of the two factions as we are going to have to commit to either helping the rebels or the Imperials. But 200 faction points is enough to immediately join one when you land if you wanted to. We're not going to worry about it, though. It's fine that we didn't help Garrick. Um this is what he gets for standing in a corner where I forget he exists. So, but other than that, if we talk to an Aldra's lieutenant, she's like, you already have something to give you, which the only option it was going to Han Solo. Also, I learned something new. Apparently, these tutorials that appear are based on location in Tansari and only stored for your game session. So if you like log out, quit, log back in and walk to certain locations, it'll give you the same tutorial. So you notice I got the M for overhead map. If I, if I go to, oh yeah, the um, elevator, <laughs> you'll see the same elevator tutorial. I didn't know that. But let's go back to Han Solo and see how we can help him. Good luck, kid. And don't forget, you owe me one. Hey, what happened to that shipment you mentioned? I guess I did. Well, I managed to sell it. Not for the profit that I wanted, but it never works out that way, does it? What was it? All right. You help me out, so I'll tell you. When I came to rescue you, I also came across some goods that needed to be liberated from the Empire. Thought that I'd pass them along to some friends. And? Turns out this stuff is hot. Really hot. 
unless I wanted a Star Destroyer flying up my nose. I had to get rid of it. All I know is that there's something valuable in it. I don't know what it is. Who did you sell it to? For your own safety, kid. I won't tell you. That's business you don't want to get involved in, believe me. <laughs> Who says I don't? I don't want to get you more involved in it. I'm done with that shipment. How do I get more work? And he sends me back to an Aldra, but let's just say I want to leave the station now. The ship's ready to go. Just remember, you won't be able to come back once we leave. Are you sure you want to go? Absolutely, I want to plant beneath my feet. Buy ten sorry point, and it gives you a little exit space station window that says, "Are you sure you can't come back?" And like, oh, kiddo. All right, so once we land, you're going to get a bunch of stuff thrown at you, including Han Solo telling you about some stuff. Show sure, a lot of promise, kid, but now you're stuck in the backwater tattoo and tell you what, I'm going to make you life a little easier and get you a speeder. And that's the speeder for me class. So we will do that later. We are also going to not talk about the Chroniclers. This, this is the Chronicler system. I mentioned it uh, last time where it is um, basically a quest building system. I like that at the bottom here. <laughs> the <laughs> licensing agreement for shit you create that you know whatever um and this is the reward claim window we'll talk about that later also but first what i want to talk about is why my mini map is so freaking tiny except to jerry thank you very much i appreciate it damn why are you so small so once you land you finally have your mini map in the upper right hand corner let's make that a little bit bigger And then we go lock it. Pop, lock, and drop it. Lock the waypoint there. All right, cool. The other thing that you get when you land, if you press the V key, you'll have your uh, planetary window, and this will show you information about the planet you're on. Looks like the rebels are invading the steen right now. Good job, guys. Keep up the good work. And you'll have a bunch of different categories that you use to find locations. So most important ones being probably bank bazaars, etc. Spy? No, officer. We're doing an officer. It's going to be very spicy. I'm doing some pretty dumb stuff, I think. But uh, you all remember that during my time in space, I got a lot of space loot. So let's go sell that. So if you ever do the Tintari Point space stuff and you have an inventory full of loot, all you need to do is come into the starport. And right in the main area over here, you see a Starship chassis broker. Talk to him and just do sell components. There's nothing in this list I want to keep, but you can see that the components sell for a rate based on their component level. These are all certification one ship parts. They all sell for a thousand. So you either click and sell them individually, or you can hold down the enter key, sell them quickly. Or if you want to get really crazy, there's ways to open up multiple of these windows and then just hit that enter key and rapid fire sell them like this if you just keep talking to them. And now my inventory is already clear of ship parts. How fast is that? The things things you learn from some people uh, who grind space a lot. Going into the inventory, though, you'll see that not everything got sold. Crafted ship parts can't be sold. And I guess the prototype ship parts can't be sold. I have no use for the prototype capacitor or reactor. So we're just going to destroy those. If you ever sell something to this guy that you uh, want back, you can go here and you can do... I sold you something I actually need. Can I buy it back? And I'll sell it for you at the price you sold it to him. The other alternative is if you talk to him, you can also mark items that you don't want to sell. We'll be doing that later for some other stuff, but nothing in the ship category right now. But before I forget, I asked for a reminder last time, but that pop-up reminded me, I don't want to be looting Chronic Relic stuff. It's fine. I just don't want to deal with it right now. So if we bring up that commands menu, go into other, Go down to the Chronicle loot toggle. Just double click that sucker. You get a thing that says your loot stats is currently enabled. Do you want to disable it? Yes. And now it's disabled, so I won't get Chronicle or loot, uh, which is fine. If I ever want Chronicle or loot, I'll turn it back on. But for now, I don't want to think about it. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to go back outside because we need to be outside for one of these two things. I'm going to use two of the most useful commands on SWG Legends immediately. So I'm going to move my chat box out so you can all see what I'm doing here. So some of the most useful commands, the most useful being is you do forward slash flash. 
We'll get a flash speeder uh, D generated for inventory right here. So if we generate vehicle, it'll be added to our toolbar and immediately you'll see that I have a speeder. Speeder for me, eat me, Han Solo. Already got one. The other most uh, fun command to use is forward slash S-E-G-O-G -G for special edition goggles. And if you look in your inventory, now you got all those cool special edition goggles. So they don't give you stats, but they look kind of neat. You know what I'm saying? So if you want a little bling, so like right now, let's uh, go with the uh, scatter ass looking thing. Let's see. You do right click equip as appearance. Can you not change the colors on that one? I guess you can't. Some of them you can change the colors on, like so this one. So if I equip it, if I open up the radio menu, do set color. I guess I have to unequip it first. All right. Frame color. I could do like red. <laughs> bling bling. Yeah. We're getting blinged out. Aesthetics are important. You could do that. Let's see, do any of these other like set color? I guess the goggles do. All right, that's frame and lens. This is lens color. What if we make a hot pink just for the for the fans out there? Yeah, nice. Let's see what are the, what do we got here? And you can always regenerate these. So usually what I do is I'll find one that I want to wear, and then I'll um, just delete the rest. So like if I do this one, oh, wow, big blue thing. Uh, Let's set this color to, hmm, I'm trying to think about, very cool. All right, we'll do that. And then the rest of these, I don't want them clogging my inventory because we're going to be getting a few more things here soon. So we got to keep our inventory sparse. And for reference, I'll point out that after selling those ship parts, we left Hansari Point Station with about a little over 100,000 credits. That sounds about right. If I was in space a little bit longer, probably could maybe farm out 150,000. But 100k is not bad to start with. If you skip the tutorial, you're level 5 immediately. You would have uh, 5,000 credits to your name and only your the clothing you generated with. Let's move the chat box back out of the way. So that's not clogging all of your views. All right. I noticed that we also have something called Java's Com Link. This starts the quest series for the Quarantine Zone, which you could do at your current level, get into and do the first portion of it. We're not going to worry about that now. We'll do the Quarantine Zone stuff far down the line as it does go up to 90 and intend to be the group content for 90. So we're not going to think about that right now. 5k in a dream subsex mug all right so now that we talked about commands what i want to show you all next is if you were level five what would i recommend you do first of all generate yourself a flash speeder hop in it and we're going to go over to the bank so we're going to come just around the corner past the cantina and this is the make bank bazaar area because when you skip the tutorial you won't have a weapon i believe or not a good one at least so you might need to get yourself a weapon before you do anything. So if you come over to the Bazaar Terminal and click on it, you'll see that this is the galaxy-wide auction house, basically. Or if you played Star Wars The Republic, the Galactic Trade Network. I'm trying to think of the best way to size this. I guess this is fine. All right. So what we have here is... Right now we're on a tab called All Auctions. We'll stay there. But let's change in front of this region, which this region is basically the city you're currently in. So this is searching all the bizarre terminals in Moss Eisley. Let's instead do the entire galaxy. And let's say that I really needed a level five weapon. So let's click on the weapon category. And I could scroll through all these weapons, but you can see that there's hundreds of them. There's 117. 117. And if I wanted to check their level, I'd have to click on them individually and read them. So this one's level 10. What's that, Multi? That's a nice emote. But let's uh, make it a little easier. Let's click uh, Enable Item Attribute Filter down here in the bottom. And what this does is it basically gives you the advanced search options. And these options will vary based on category to category, but right now I just have Weapon clicked. So if we go to the Attribute dropdown, 
Uh, let's just scroll down, and I believe it is called combat level is what we're looking for. Yep, combat level required. Let's click and add that. Let's do the maximum value is five. And let's check this box that item must have attribute. And let's click add. We don't really care about the minimum value. We just want it to be at least five. And if we hit refresh search, these are all of the weapons available on the bazaar that are able to be wielded by somebody level five or lower. So I don't have to click through and read them all. So here's a rifle, here's a dagger, here's a carbine, carbine, pistol, bowcaster, Wookiee only. But so you get the idea. If you wanted a bigger a variety search options, what I would recommend doing is go to vendor location tab here up the top, filter for entire galaxy, and then click back on the weapon tab, and then just hit refresh again to make sure this is applied. And now you're searching the entire galaxy's vendors in terms of player vendors. Bizarre terminals only host and sell items local to the city. And usually people have to list fees and have other restrictions. But you'll notice that if you search the vendor location, these are actually player vendors people have made and sell items on. So if I actually click on this pistol, you'll notice that I don't have a buy option. That's because on the main window here, I'll have to hit the create waypoint button. And then in my data pad, which you can open with K, under the waypoints tab, and now I have a vendor item buy option here. So I would actually have to go out to their vendor, which coincidentally is on Tatooine. So I've activate that. You'll see it's out here, south of this player city. So I likely have to take a shuttle, get out to the player city, drive to the vendor, then buy the item off that vendor. You'll find usually a lot more items from doing that than you will searching the bazaar. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Just started doing a little extra stream and I felt like continuing my little level 1 to 90 series. So for anyone just coming in, I deleted one of my five characters on SWG Legends and I'm leveling a new one from level 1 to level 90. So we finished the tutorial area and now we're on the ground portion. And I'm giving some tips and orientation for players if they were to just land themselves and then we're going to get going on the legacy quests. But while we're here at the vendors, some other things that you might want to purchase specifically from vendor search is maybe some food buffs. So if I'm searching all here in the object type filter category and I do Aka, these are all the vendor listings in the galaxy for Akaragum, which is a food that will boost your base movement speed. Very handy to have when questing. If you want something more defense oriented, like say you're doing Dim's theme park and you're having a hard time, I think I spell I spelled heaven wrong. Oh no. Okay, breath of heaven. Uh, three percent dodge and two hundred eleven constitutions. That's good as you're gonna get for a defensive option. There's some other foods that also have some worth, but those are the two that I recommend the most for leveling, especially Akaragum. Just movement speed's great. All right, now that we talk about the bazaar, we got some items in my inventory that I really don't care to hold on to. Luckily, there's an easy way to store them other than getting your own house is if you come over to the banking terminal and if you open up the radial menu on it and you scroll over use bank you have four options here deposit withdrawal is the first one that's the most standard here it basically moves cash between your pocket and the bank uh the main point of having in your pocket is whatever cash is in your pocket is what you could tip other players or trade via the trade window having it in your bank is where it will pull automatically for if, if it's going to pull maintenance for your house or do other things for me let's um let's carry 50k let's say that so I'll split it in half you want to have some credits on you when you go to see an entertainer which we're going to do here in a little bit but if we scroll over this you also have three other options the second one being a very good one which is the safety deposit so you'll notice that your inventory is opened up and the safety deposit box. And the safety deposit box is adds as an extra storage of 100 items that you can grab from any bank at anywhere. So unlike your safety deposit box in real life where you have to go to the actual bank that it is, you can go to any bank terminal in the galaxy and access your deposit and whatever items you have in there. So I don't really want to carry on the Chronicle Starter Kit or these fragments. So we can throw those in there. Jabba's comic, like I said, we'll deal with later, but we want to keep it. I don't think there's anything in my backpack. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to be keeping these appearance items for a reason. 
I also don't really need this travel brochure. Might use it as an appearance thing later. And I don't need this feather duster. So let's store that as well. Cool. And then the other two options you have here is if you want to throw all your credits in, take all your credits out. The Galactic Reserved is used for players who have maxed out their credit carrying capacity. So in your inventory, when you see your cash and bank options, each one of those can hold 1 billion credits. So you can have 1 billion credits in your pocket and 1 billion credits in your bank. If you start, if you meet 1 billion credits, you can go to a banking terminal and you can deposit 1 billion cre uh, credits and you can withdraw 1 billion credits at the time. You can store up to 5 billion credits in the bank and then 2 billion on your person, basically. So you can, each character can hold up to 7 billion credits total. That's really only a problem for a couple of players. You'll probably won't really need to worry about that. And then before we leave the area, we have the junk dealer over here, which you're going to be visiting a lot for a variety of reasons, such as uh, selling junk, which we talked about earlier. But one thing that this junk dealer will let you do that the one on the Tensari Point Station wouldn't is mark items that you don't want to sell. So I'm going to go... And I don't want to uh, sell the Tatooine Bug Juice, which is my reusable buff. I don't really want to sell the Auditory Targeting Acquisition Beacon. We'll use that. And then all this junk loot that I have here is junk loot that I intentionally kept. I don't want to sell that either because I'm going to be using that for reverse engineering or potentially saving up to sell to people who do reverse engineer. So I'm going to log all of these and I'll show you an example of what that does. So I did everything but the reactor. So if I go, or reactivator, so if I go over here and I say I have some things you might be interested in, you'll see only the emergency reactivators there. This prevents you from accidentally selling things that you don't want. So that could be junk loot, that could be buff items like the Tatooine Bug Juice, and etc. So what I'm going to do is I'll just mark that last one. And then if you talk to her again, you can see that she has the same buyback option that the chassis dealer has. Um, and then this last option... What sort of items do you have that you're looking to get rid of? They're basically assembly kits. So while crafting, you might get pieces of orange thread, blue thread, gong uh, segments, um, glass table options, statue pieces. This is the you can get this kit from the junk dealer and assemble all those parts. Uh, the rug, the blue and orange rug cell forno came out. Everything else, not too much. So I wouldn't really worry about holding on to all that. Next, you might say, all right, well, I skipped the tutorial. I don't have a ship. What do I do? Well, you can open up the claim window claim window with forward slash claim if you closed it earlier. And you can redeem a few day one rewards, which includes the Soro Sub Luxury Yacht, which puts a deed in your inventory that you can generate the yacht from. The yacht, unlike the prototype ship I was flying earlier, you can't have weapons on it. You can't modify the ship at all. You can fly it around space freely, but you won't be attacked. But similarly, you can't attack anything else. Uh, but it will let you travel from planet to planet. Um, but save, you don't want to redeem the yacht or whatever. So let's do Remind Me a Week. What you can do is you can actually go over to the cantina. Run towards the back. All the way to the back. And back here, you'll see Dravis. We talked to Dravis. You can sign up to be a, a pilot with the Smuggler's Alliance, and they'll give you a free ship, and you'll start your Smuggler Alliance piloting. He'll put a quest in the data section of your data pad. You can abandon it if you want and just keep the ship. And that'll give you a free ship to move around the galaxy with. And unlike the yacht, it'll actually have weapons on it. So if you ever do need to do space quests and maybe get carried through some stuff, you can um, pick that ship up so you're not stuck with the yacht the whole time. You could also get starter ships from other pilot factions. So if you want a Rebel or Imperial, you can do that as well. I just always advocate for Javis because he's literally right here. So very convenient. Lastly, let's start getting running a quest here. So let's go over to a, the main cantina area and see if we can find an entertainer who's actually buffing. Wow, it's kind of quiet in here. There's this player, so maybe we do that. So when you see an entertainer, what you can do is you can watch one and listen to the other, and it makes your buff tick up a little faster. If you want to get your buff as long as possible, you want to just watch somebody with the buff icon like this, where it looks like a pet and a person dancing. 
This increases the duration but of your entertainer buff, but only if you're watching an entertainer with it. Without it, most entertainers will cap out at five and a half hours. With it, you can get a six hour buff. Spoiler alert, we're probably not going to be going for six hours today. So I'm going to actually come over to this other entertainer, open up my radio menu on them and click listen. And we'll get uh, ticks twice as fast now. We will end up hearing their sick tunes though. But while we get buffed up... So when you're getting buffed by an entertainer, the two buffs that I recommend that 90% of players get by their leveling is Flush with Success and Go with the Flow. Flush with with Success will increase the amount of experience you gain. So obviously you level up faster. That's always really great. The second one being Go with the Flow, it increases your base movement speed. So if you don't have that movement increasing drink Akaragim, you can use this instead. My understanding is that the base movement speed caps at 25, which was what Go with the Flow will take you up to. Akaragim could get you to that as well. So having both on isn't super useful to my understanding. But so we're going to be getting a little, little something different because I am going to have some Akaragam today. So once you're done, you want to whisper the entertainer with what you like for a buff. So I'm going to whisper this entertainer and I'm going to be posting um, in the link of the video's description a website where you can actually look at the entertainer build a buff screen. So the same thing that these entertainers see on legends when they're allocating buff points. So if you want to play around with buff options yourself, you can. But for this one, I asked this entertainer to send me, uh, give me action cost reduction, some constitution and flush, flush with success for XP, because I'm going to be drinking Akaragam to get the speed bonus. Again, if you don't, if you don't have Akaragam, it's fine. You could just get it here. I'm just being silly. Don't worry about it. It's being a little silly boff and officer. So once it's all done, you can see the accept box here. You accept it. And then the most important step, which I will unlock the window to show, you want to tip the person. So let's do tip, put in their name so we don't tip somebody else. And I'm going to tip them 25,000 credits. And I'm also going to thank them. Now, some people ask me, uh, what is the proper tip amount? It, it varies, so 25,000 credits for a starting level 10 is pretty <laughs> pretty high. Um, but I know we're going to make some credits from doing other things. I would recommend, you know, tip something. Tip at least 1,000 credits. Like, if you just made a character, bought a weapon, and you're broke, just give him something. If you are a level 90 character, you got cash flow i usually tip fifty thousand credits sometimes more but just work your way up lastly we're going to come over here to the med center and in here you'll see a bunch of people standing around staring at beds all you need to do is walk up to one and sit down if you don't start receiving buffs from buffs from these players you might need to go on leave if you are a member of the imperial or rebel forces because these characters are generally on leave themselves so if i check this medic they are not even in a faction. So if I was combatant, they wouldn't be able to buff me. But what we did here is we just got seven buffs from this medic. And they're all going to uh, enhance other stats. So they're enhancing a lot of core stats by 80. They're enhancing our block stat by 10%. And basically, this is going to make us pretty tanky. Lastly, you also see that there's a cybernetic arm that we got from the entertainer. That entertainer had a little blue glowy circle in their buff bar it's a jewelry set that gives an extra buff and the extra buff provided by that jewelry set is 90 minutes of increased experience gain by 25 percent pet experience gain and gcw point bonus so if you really want to maximize your xp returns you want to find an entertainer with this, this jewelry set all right so i think we're all buffed up and we're gonna start going and doing stuff but it sounds like i'm getting called over here from this alleyway it looks like there's a player over here uh oh Who's this? Looks like they want to give me some stuff, though. It's like we're getting a backpack, some animals. Hope I'm not getting involved in any trafficking. A droid and, uh, wow. Look at that, a jetpack. Very generous of the my benefactor here to be giving me such valuable items. And then they flex at me and then run away. Strange. It's like that was another character that I'm playing or something. 
All right, so I did give myself a little stipend of something, something to start with for funsies. I'm not going to go over everything in the, uh, my little care package here immediately because it's a lot. As you can see, there's 55 items in here. But we're going to go over a few things with it really quick. First of all is, like I talked about earlier, when you get backpacks, sometimes they'll ask to be bound, biolinked. Usually very um, endgame backpacks have that. You would also see this backpack has 65 capacity instead of 50. So, again, more storage like I talked about. But in order to wear an item that requires biolink, you first have to right-click the item and do biolink item. And now it says it's biolink to me. No other player can wear it. And I'm going to equip this item. And I always like my backpack up top. So put up here, and then we could take these items and put them in this other backpack. So this backpack I assembled on some other characters ahead of time because I wanted to mess around with some stuff. I also have fun um, uh, min maxing at low levels. We can't use everything at once as there are some requirement level requirements, other things for this thing that nature. So luckily we won't be going through all this at once. The first thing I want to talk about though is let's talk about stats, specifically exotic stats. So you would have noticed that up to this point, most items you're getting are giving you like three agility, um, three luck, very uh, core stats. So what these are called, they're called basic attributes and they go into your basic abilities, but certain clothing and items later found in the game can affect what we call exotic modifiers. Those are much more specific in what they impact. So this shirt, that's a big shirt. There we go. This shirt has three exotic modifiers that it affects. It affects one hand melee action cost, one handed crit critical chance, and one handed melee damage. So what that means is one handed melee weapons, so one handed swords, etc. I'm gonna have a reduced action cost of 3%, a reduced critical or an increased chance to crit with them by 3% and a one handed melee damage bonus of 2%. Now, one thing that I want to stress is that when you see it, these numbers, they're not always a flat one to one, they're not always 3% to 3%. A really good example of that is actually parry, which I have a power up here that I can show you. So, parry is called parry rating, and you can see 19 is like, wow, 19% chance to parry bonus. That sounds sick. No. What a 19 rating is, divide that by 10, basically. So this is a 1.9% increase to your parry rating, not 19. This will vary between stats, case-by-case -case basis, but usually if the number seems really high for something and it sounds really good, it's likely not one-to-one. -one. But uh, I'll, I'll equip the shirt right now, because screw it, why not? And you can see my ripped Bothan if I do that. Even though we're not using a one-handed melee weapon right now, we're using a pole arm, so these stats don't do anything at the moment. But you can see I have a bag full of knives here, um, <laughs> so we're not going to worry about it right now. The other thing is I'm going to add some buffs to my bar. So one of the buffs is this buff. This buff is gotten for 2,000 uh, Rebel or Imperial tokens that you earn from doing uh, Galactic Civil War invasions in cities. You can also buy it from the players. It gives you a 5% damage output increase for 10 seconds. The hilarious part is there's no uh, level restriction on it. So if I activate it right now, there's the buff on my bar. <laughs> so this isn't a great buff. It's totally not worth going out of your way for. I just had a bunch of tokens on a character that I was about to delete. And I was like, you're going to be funny if I buy these. So um, yeah, we're going to have the tactical electro binoculars. Um, the other things in here that we want to take a look at is, so here's the Akaragam that I mentioned earlier. I had some from another character. I just transferred them over. So I'm going to put this food buff on my buff portion here. And we're going to be drinking that a lot. Uh, what else do we have here? Ah, yeah. Here's a good thing to talk about. Shield generators are made by munitions traders. but And while they're kind of in the, they're in the armor category, you could actually equip them immediately because they're technically not armor so like i said earlier armor use is restricted to level 22 uh technically a shield generator is not armor 
For those who don't know what a shield generator does, it's an item that occupies your waist slot, so you can't wear belts or anything else that would occupy your character's waist slot. And in exchange, they give you an amount of kinetic or energy protection rated to whatever they're crafted with. Their efficiency is basically their total charge at the moment, so you see the efficiency in the shields going up. All efficiency starts at zero once they're equipped, then they'll charge up to 100. And taking attacks in combat will reduce the efficiency as it mitigates damage. The amount of damage it mitigates is based on these armor values. So right now it's going to be mitigating 249, uh, 2,499 points of energy or it's 816 points of kinetic. Why shield generators are so good though is if I go my character sheet, you'll notice that I don't have any armor rating on here. It's because again, they're not armor. So that's protection layered on top of the armor you already have. So I don't believe it's affected by the diminishing returns that stacking armor on your character receives. It's a separate pool. The other stat in here is you see recharge rate. Um, typically, more recharge, better recharge. The important thing you want to keep in mind when picking a shield generator, though, is what you're going to be using it for. Since I am leveling from 1 to 90, I'm going to be doing a lot of PvE content. And shield generators only block damage from ranged attacks. NPCs, when they do melee damage, it is... I think it's always kinetic. There might be some situations where it might do elemental, but I don't think it's ever energy. Even NPCs wielding lightsabers do kin uh, kinetic damage. So since ranged attacks are almost always going to be energy, there's no point in me worrying about having a high kinetic stat on the shield. So I got a shield with as high as energy as possible and as good as recharge rate it can get. That's a balancing act. There's a shield personal shield gen or shopping guide, but you can get really good shields for pretty cheap. I think I bought this shield for like... 300,000 credits and it's capped for its uh, recharge rate and energy protection and pretty good on the kinetic too. You'll notice that this one does have agility, luck, and strength. That's because I added those stats to this item later and that's part of the reverse engineering system. I'm not going to go into that, but basically this while equipped, this is also giving me these basic attributes. Let's see. Oh, okay. Here's a very cool buff that uh, no one's ever going to use. I'm just using it for memes. What's up, Ryan? Which is the glucose uh, metabolite inhaler. If you watched my travel guide video uh, on how to traverse the galaxy, you would have seen this. This modifies your character's terrain negotiation, and we're going to be using this for a couple of levels, specifically until level <laughs> 18, <laughs> so for eight levels. And because the reason is, is if we go over into our character sheet and go to skill mods and look for terrain negotiation, it's 25. So as I go up and down hill, uh, up hills, or up inclines, I'm gonna be moving slower. But if I take this inhaler, which I have to buy a link to use first, it's gonna give me enough terrain negotiation to overcome that. So if I activate it right now, you'll see my terrain negotiation 65. So not only can I go up hills faster, but I can also crawl faster. So if I wanna crawl for whatever reason, that's a thing I can be doing. And uh, anything else I wanna talk about in here right now? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, this is meme worthy. Um, this is the concentrated back to tank. The, you get this as a crest reward from a level 90 quest. That is a prerequisite quest for if you want to do the Gorax Matriarch world boss and like complete the associated quest. Again, it has no level requirement. It does have a 60 minute cooldown, but what it does is when used, it fills your health. So say you're out questing, you get incapacitated by something and you're at its feet and you're worried that if you stand up and get in combat, it's going to kill you quickly. Just have this on your toolbar and start smashing it. And uh, if you hit it fast enough, you'll uh, fill your health completely. Zero to 100. So nice to have. Some niche stuff that uh, we don't really need to use right now, but I'll bring up because you might be curious. There is spice in the game, and I make spice, so that smuggler that handed off stuff to me also handed off some of their own personal stash of spice. So I've got some Shadow Paro to boost our strength, base damage output when we need it, and some Neutron Pixie to uh, boost some of our more survival-oriented stats. Uh, again, I'm not going to be using spice always. It's expensive, time-consuming, and we just... Uh, no, I don't need this with it right now. Uh, the other buff items in here we can't really use yet or not really worth talking about at the moment, so we're not going to really talk about that that much. I can't wear armor right now, so we're not going to do that either. The last thing you might notice is, again, I have a bag full of knives. We're playing a melee officer, and in the words of Brock Sampson, guns are free. So we're going to be using knives. Knives, swords, etc. 
So we're going to be playing a melee officer for leveling. I just thought it'd be fun. I'm yeah, people are like, well, range would be faster, would have been like, yeah, but I go up and loot every corpse. So I have to be close to them anyways to loot them. It's fine. But for now, I think that's everything from the backpack we want to talk about. And there's some other exciting things in there. But before we get questing, there is one collection that we can do. So let's say you don't have access to your claim window window for whatever reason. Like maybe your account's really fresh because I think your account has to exist for 10 days before you can start claiming anything in the game. But say you really want an instant travel vehicle like the Royal Nubian or Royal Ship or whatever. So we're going to do a collection called What a Piece of Junk. And what a piece of junk is, it's a very easy collection you can do by going around and collecting parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back inside the starport. And we're just going to come right over here and you'll see a crate of rattle trap junk parts. Now this is like a collection items on the um, space station. So you got to run up to them, stop for a minute and then click and then you'll start collecting. And you'll see you'll start the collection, what a piece of junk, and we'll add this one. And then what I usually do when I'm doing these things is I will destroy these waypoints one by one, knowing that I already did it and checked it off. The next one is in Bastine, so let's travel over there. So since we have our prototype sick, or if you added the yacht to your inventory, you can go up to the starship terminal like this one. You'll see whatever ships you own here, but we're going to select the prototype sick. And instead of launching the ship, what we're going to do is we're going to select travel. And you can see we can travel to anywhere in the galaxy where there's a starport that we're eligible to land at. But we want to stick to Tatooine and we want to go to Bastine. And we're going to travel and we'll travel for free. There's no associated cost with this. If I was to take the shuttle in the starport, we'd have to pay a ticket price, run up queue, give it the ticket collector, but we don't care. So we're going to go here and then we need to run all the way around. And we're going to collect the next what a piece of junk item. Now, some people might be asking, Burrito, you can claim the royal ship while you're doing this. Well, other than demonstrating for people who might be have really fresh accounts and not have the opportunity to do this uh, or claim the ship. Uh, the other perk that the ship has that some people might be interested in is that I think it has a smaller space requirement than other travel vessels. For example, the royal ship is quite large. So when you call it to travel with, you need a pretty good chunk of land to fit it. The rattle trap is actually pretty small. It might be one of the smallest instant travel vehicles in the game. So that's one perk of it. Other than that, you don't really need to do this. Um, I'm just doing it for funsies. What's up, JS Pace Man? Here to learn as much as I can. Sick. Well, welcome to the stream. If you have any questions, let me know if you need me to repeat it. By the way, if anyone ever needs me to repeat anything I say, I know I'm dropping a lot of info, especially with the, uh, wow, look at the backpack full of goodies <laughs> stuff. Or you want more information, like you'd be like, hey, how can I find a good and inexpensive shield generator by? I can go and give tips on that too. So don't be afraid to um, carry the conversation elsewhere. So we're collected all three of the rattle trap parts on Tatooine. So if I open my data pad and I go to waypoints here, you can see that I have some other waypoints that I generated from a guide on the SWG Legends wiki. So we have uh, five more parts to collect. So let's go to Kadara on Naboo. So you can see we traveled to Naboo. Didn't have to wait for a shuttle or anything. Let's see, where is this ship part? Let's activate these waypoints. You can activate waypoints from your data pad or deactivate them, or you can do what I'm doing from the world map and hover over waypoint and right-click it, by the way. So let's add this to our inventory here. Oh, there's Kadar. Looks like we're going to have to go over to Thede. So let's get our starship. Head over that way. Sometimes they're called starports and sometimes they're called spaceports. If anyone knows the canonical difference between them, please educate me. Um, if there is none and they just kept flip-flopping on it, that I would totally believe. Because like even here, it says on the world map, starport Thede. But then on the travel map, it says spaceport. <laughs> I think they just couldn't pick a lane. 
We're going to run up here into the hangar. We're going to run over here past Sergeant Harriet Brunzer. We'll be talking to her later once we get to Naboo Legacy. But ah. just here, let me look. My stream seems to be doing okay out of my end. If anyone else is seeing some issues, let me know. If you are seeing issues, also try and refresh your stream. All right, let's go get the one from Corellia next. It's in Coronet. Shouts to Coronet. We'll be spending a lot of time here, not only for Corellia Legacy Letter, but also I will be torturing myself with the Meat Lump theme park. I hope you all love me, love seeing me do the same five puzzles repeatedly. I have completed the theme park before on my Commando. So. It is not my favorite, but it's not my least favorite. All right, here's the next crate. We're just going to walk over. Stop. Pick it up. Okay, this is the only one on Coronet. The other ones are on Talus, which if we look at this, looks like we have Nashil and Derek. So let's go to uh, Derek first. A nice part about this collection, too, is you just really have to go from starport to starport. So you get a little bit of a um, look at the galaxy and what's ahead of you to do. So Talos is another stretch of the Legacy Quest, so we'll be back here much later. There's also a very good side quest in the Cantina that many people will know about, Avenging Mort, which is getting the Katarn armor and some other cool items. We will definitely do that later. Let's pick up this crate of Rattletrap junk parts. Avenging Mort is a level 55, 50 recommended quest. But still, it might be even valuable to do at level 90, depending on, you know, cash and everything. Least favorite TP theme park? To be fair, I haven't done Imperial theme park since live, so I don't have a great memory of it. Uh, but if it's anything like Rebel theme park, I definitely enjoy it more than... Um, uh, meat lump. The main reason I don't like the meat lump theme park is, well, it, it doesn't really pick a lane. It has a lot of more social elements with the puzzles and exploration stuff, but then it still has at level combat encounters. So if you're doing this as like a trader without any gear or like a combat droid or something, you're gonna get your butt kicked. So it's kind of weird. It like wants to have a little bit of combat, but also seems more to be a social theme park. All right, so let's see here. Let me uh, finish this. <laughs> Hold on. Did I miss one? Uh, the other theme park that I don't really have a, um, a, a big fawn for is kind of like the pre-CU ones that were just made like Azure Cabal. You don't do anything in that one. You just go around, fight a bunch of high-level NPCs and get credits. Like The reward's not very interesting. I don't even remember the plot. Seekers of the Sirens only redeemable because it has a good item. Okay, so we've went and collected all the Rattle Trap parts except for um, I guess what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, I guess I didn't generate the 8th one. I'm missing one. I'm missing the feed one. Did I not actually at it anyways you hate the back and forth running around imperial theme park uh yeah the rebel theme park has a lot of that too but luckily a lot of the places you're back and forth in between have people people who've um stored at uh at head locations at so like one thing that sucks about the Rebel Theme Park is you gotta go out to the Exarchoon Temple, then you have to go to the Woolamander Palace, then you have to go back out to the Exarchoon Temple, then back out to the Woolamander Palace, but because of at, -AT heads, you can just warp around fast. If it wasn't for those, I'd probably put Rebel Theme Park pretty stinky. Oh, I guess I didn't finish collecting this one. <laughs> Oops. There we go. So now we receive the ITV Rattle Trap. So, let's, uh, let's go demonstrate this. Oh, you guys want to see me pack up someone's house, maybe? So when you run into a player city, you might see things like zoning violation. This is somebody who hasn't potentially logged into their character within the last 90 days. So if you walk over to the sign, open up the radio window, and click demolish house. 
the house gets packed up. You don't get any bonus for that, but it's not like the demolition event. You just... That's it. <laughs> but anyways. So... If I go to my inventory with the ITV Rattle Trap, which this works the same for all ITVs, there'll be no trade. You have a deed of your Rattle Trap. If I right-click it and do Grant Ability, now you'll see on my bar I have this ability that says Call for Rattle Trap Pickup. If you didn't have room on your bar or you want to put it on a different bar, it's in your Commands window under Other right here. But if I activate that ability, I get this little thing that shows up. Isn't it cute and shitty? But if I click on it, I can go to all of these places for free. Anything with a shuttle port, starport, or a camp with a shuttle beacon, I can go to. So let's uh, say I want to go to Corinne. So I'll click the Corinne starport, do travel, and for free, boom, right there. Now, the thing that's really nice about this is, again, cost you no credits. You can drop it anywhere out in the world. You can't place it inside structure, inside player cities, or you can't place it inside NPC cities or, like, structural areas. So, for example, we can't summon our ship inside the starport or in the town at all there'll be other areas and zones where you're not allowed to do that but that's going to be helping us get around quickly fast you were able to move the icons around when you try it takes you several tries where you can do that it happens a lot with your skills are you talking about clicking and dragging the icons or moving between bars moving between bars if you scroll over with mouse wheel or click the arrows you can do it i what i do is i hold the control key and i have them bound from one through six so I just do this. So right now, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, clicking and dragging is fine. One thing that you can do that makes that easier is if you right click the hot bar, if you haven't already, you can lock the window. So if I accidentally click off the ability, I won't drag my window around. And that happens a lot. Also scaling up your UI and just making the things easier to click is an obvious, like a quick way to make it easier. Okay, well, we got our ITV. How about we go quest? <laughs> All right, let's go back to Moss Eisley. It's weird being not level 90. I haven't been not level 90 in a long time. So seeing everyone with these uh, purple icons next to their names, weird. But if we run back outside, the last thing I want to introduce you all to is uh, a few things that were traded to me was, first of all, you see that um, uh, by my mysterious benefactor, me, uh, gave me a jetpack. And the nice thing about the jetpack is, first of all, um, it's a very fast vehicle. But really, the reason I can't quest without a jetpack anymore, guys, I'm just going to be honest. After doing it once, I just can't. Because look at this shit. I don't have to worry about city walls. Like, look at this. Ugh. I don't have to, I don't have to drive around sh low walls anymore or rocks or stumps. It's awesome. But backpacks are expensive, so if you really don't want to, like, if you don't have a backpack, a jetpack laying around like me, what you can do is you can buy a creature mount for pretty cheap, one that flies. So here I have a whisper bird egg that I incubated for myself. I right-click it, hatch my mount. It has been hatched. And if I go to my data pad, you'll see I have a whisper bird. And we'll put that on my bar. But now if I summon the bird, we're on a bird now. And the bird has the same benefit of being able to fly over low walls. Usually. Is let's come back to the starport area. Oh, you know what? I said I was gonna do uh I said I was gonna do speeder for me. Let's do speeder for me in a jetpack, just to make Han feel really worthless. So typically you'd have to walk this to get a speeder. But uh we'll just pick that up. The only problem with the jetpack is you can't just have it out. It stores once you dismount. So there's cases where having an actual mount out is a little bit faster. We'll be getting another mount later in the game. But right now, we're just, it's fine. Jetpack's fine. The jetpack's cool, okay? Let's get the busted speeder bike. There's some Tuscans hanging out over there. Am I not close enough? Am I not close enough? There we go. <laughs> Took a second. All right, and this gives us the deed for the XP-38 land speeder. Done it, kid. You should now be able to have a deed in your inventory. 
You used to get your speeder ready to go so we could go and generate the vehicle like we did with the others. Sometimes you have to give it a second. Boom, wow, we have an XP-38 land speeder. So cool. Very slow. S sorry, someone was jamming me. Anyway, now that you have a speeder, why don't you speed back into town and see my friend Pal? <laughs> he can give you a customization kit for it. Pal. So we take our XP-38 land speeder and we slowly limp it back over to Pal. For reference, speeders have different vehicles and creature mounts have different speeds uh, based on the mountain or vehicle in question. The XP-38 is one of the slower ones. Let's talk to Pal. And he just says, you must be Hans, buddy. You tell him this is it. My debt's paid off. I can't just hand these things out, you know. You're right, you would crash the engineer's market for this. Let's see what Han said. Let's see what this message is coming through. Before we get to uh, painting our vehicle here. I think Jabba's on to me. I can't risk making content like this, but Jabba's after you to work for him too now. Meet my friend Vork at the starport. He'll tell you what's going on. We go in our inventory though. There we go. We'll see this. We have this vehicle customization, vehicle customization kit. And if we double click that, whatever vehicle we have currently out, we can change the color of. No, you can't change the color of jetpacks yet. They might change that. But if we modify the color trim, you can see on a preview over here what that looks like on the vehicle. Um, let's do um, let's do this hot pink, and then for the vehicle frame, we'll do uh, hmm. Jet black, sure. And now we have it customized. But you notice that uh, the customization won't last forever. It's based on the quality of the kit, I think, or type of kit you use. The customization fades every time you summon the vehicle. So we'll put that away, and you'll probably never see it again. The last thing I want to talk about in my data pad is I was traded destroyed. His name is Jojo. Because uh, Dio was in the film, so I have Jojo in the game. He has a cool little module in it. If you look at him, it doesn't say anything. But if I radial him, go over droid options. He has a droid item storage compartment. So I can store items in here that I don't need to hold on to. So if I really wanted to, I could like drop items in here and call them out later. Um, some items we won't need for a while. I won't be able to use the sprint stim until level 80. So let's just throw that in there. This new firing injector, we can't use that to level 55. Let's throw that in there. Um, I don't need to carry around a level 90 carbine that I can't use, or a sword that's level 90. I don't really need to carry around this carbine gear right now. And let's see what else don't I need to be carrying right now. I think that's it. Yeah, okay. So we cleared up my backpack space a little bit. Not that I was, you know, tight or anything, but we can store Jojo. Uh, the other thing is you saw I was treated two animals. So there are familiars in the game. Uh, there's been familiars in the game for a while, but Legends has a system where you can generate familiars through the creature taming system. I have a guide for it on my YouTube channel if that interests you. But these familiars will give you two buffs. So this one will give me an a increase in precision and strength, and this one will give me increase in luck and agility so if i summon this bowl very cute much love you'll see i get this buff icon that says precision strength familiar and buffs my precision by 40 and strength by 40. and i'm gonna put him uh, or her or whatever i'll put these guys on my bar too i'm just gonna let them over here usually my familiar is over here can i still drink my bug juice no. So Bug Juice is apparently similar to another buff I already have active, so we're not going to be using our Tatooine Bug Juice anymore. So I think I'll go find a bank terminal at some point and throw that in there. Can I use my targeting matrix? I can. So some of you might be curious. Hey, Burrito, you've been stacking a lot of items and buffs. What's your stats at now? I remember how uh, my action was uh, not even 1,100 at the start of the stream. Well, and I have 4,181 and almost 7K health. Uh, my con is over 200, 400. 
<laughs> uh, Star Wars Galaxies has a buff meta. More buffs, the more better. You want to have as many buffs as possible at all times. It significantly enhances your ability to do anything in the game. A well-buffed level 90 character can easily, like, 1v3 three level 90 characters that are unbuffed. I'm just going to sit here and refresh my buffs because we're here anyways. So we're going to be going over and talking to Varuk. Varuk is a Twi'lek standing in front of the starport. If we were level 5, we would actually be rerouted from Varuk to the mayor to do some side quests around town. You can't continue the legacy quest until you are level 10. But since we're already level 10, we can jump right into it. I would do those mayor quests if I could, but since I'm level 10, I think the, the NPCs turn you away. Let's see, one of them is actually this character, Entha. I assume the mayor sent you? Not really. Yeah, and she waves you off, so we can't even do that work. So we're not going to worry about it. Instead, we're going to come over here and we're going to talk to Vorok. Also, hello, Kaz. You have to hurry. Jabba's already searching for you. Why does Jabba want me to f want to force me to work for him? Whoa, Vaughn, maybe it's because you're dressed in, like, 30 billion worth of stuff. Um... I can't explain right now. Vampire wanted you because you're special, and that's good enough for him to want you too. Wow, Jabba, that seems pretty lazy. That's all I can say right now. So what do I do? I have inside information that Jabba's man, Bib, is going to contact you shortly. Just do what he asks. We'll make sure to get you out of this situation soon. Is he going to kill me? No, he wants you to work for him. We've got people on the inside that will be able to help you later. Just do what Bib asks. How will I know who I can trust? You won't. Just do what Bib asks and we'll handle the rest. And then you have some other options. You could, uh, I don't know anything about this. Isley and he'll send you some NPCs that can give you your information. Okay, if you ask what if you ask me to fly a ship, he'll send you some piloting trainers. But what does it do? Okay, I'll do what he says. Bib has you doing jobs to work off Jabba's animosity. Rourke has you doing the same to betray him. Hopefully in all of this, you'll find what you need. I know, we're getting searched by law enforcement. Oh, no. And the Moss Eisley police officer is a higher level than me. <laughs> All right, Bibbs called us. Ah, the troublemaker. Jabba's not pleased with you. Go see Nico. If you can help him do some jobs, Jabba might buy you some mercy. Why did I pay 240 credits to Agent? Contraband on your possession. Oh, it's because I'm carrying spice? Fuck your shit. <laughs> I didn't know I got charged for carrying drugs. All right. When you kill a, a police officer, you lose some faction and gain some faction. So town people and the wing guard don't like me very much now, but uh, bandit rogue droids and sucks. I don't know why rogue droids has faction, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Instead, let's go uh, meet Bid's contact, who's not very far away. I didn't really need to mount up for this, did I? This is Nico. My god, so many people. Jabba says you're good muscle. Well, I need a rival gang roughed up. Think you can do that? What do they do? They kill one of Jabba's couriers and stole some valuable old Republic coins. Jabba wants them back. What about the gangers that have them? Jabba wants them dead as an example to any upstart gangs. You want me to kill them in cold blood? It won't be cold, pal, I can tell you that. I'll see if I can get your coins back. Yeah, coins. Just make sure those gangers are dead. Boss Isley has a cold form of justice. If you are the boss, you make the justice. Jabba is boss here, and his justice is harsh. Don't expect to cross him and live. These gangers are lucky. Jabba didn't want to torture them. And we'll get a multi-scope for whatever good that is. All right, so let's mount up. Let's head this way. Going back to what Armand said about having not done the Jedi theme park on Legends yet. Jedi theme park does need a couple of friends to do in its current iteration, so keep that in mind as level 90 content. It's a good start. They're working on the rest, though. All right, so the rival gang is the Swoop Gangers, and we just gotta, you know, do what we were taught on Tansari as a good leader, which is uh, kill in cold blood. Is that a good example for our quote-unquote subordinates that we don't have? Signs of a good leader in this universe are murder. Uh, you can see that getting the coins is a chance, so we're just going to have to keep beating these guys up until they give up the goods. You'll notice, though, that unlike on Tansari, I'm not losing action very fast. That's because I have so much of it for level 10. 
Hey, leave me alone. Alright. One downside of the jetpack is, like I said, it won't stay out when we're not in combat. So, um, if I want to call it, I'll have to wait for combat to be over. However, a perk of that is, is it won't typically get blown up by AoEs. AoEs and um, COEs have cone of effects and area of effects. They can damage and potentially destroy your vehicles, which then some of them can be repaired at garages. Some of them you need a restoration kick to repair, so not letting them get destroyed in the first place is probably the best. Here's your money. Bib wants you to talk to Donier about doing a delivery for him. Deliveries? What am I supposed to deliver? A package for Donier. That's all you need to worry about. So what if I refuse? The local, I let the local authorities know you were the one that killed those gangers, and then all you have to worry about is dodging the law and Jabba's hitman. This deal is getting worse all the time. Someone hand me my blue milk. We got some Lando representation here in the dialogue. It's better than being dead. This is where you can find Dunier. Got it. It wants you to check in with Dunier about a package you need to deliver. Alright. So we leveled up to level 11. Nothing we can do with that. But level 12, we'll get another exp expertise point. So Here's Dunier. Nice hat. I'd like to make some credits fast. I'm always interested in credits. Fast, slow, or otherwise. I'm glad I'm so flexible. Good, good. See, all I need you to do is take this package out to some friends of mine on the outskirts of town. I think you're up for that. Okay, but you had better have my cash when I return. <laughs> or maybe what's in the package. I'll say, okay. Not a problem. I'll even drop it in your account when I get word it's been delivered. How does that sound? Sure, let's do this then. Great, here's the box and its destination. Okay. So we did get that weapon scope buff. Uh, apparently I can activate it, but it overwrote my glucose metabolite inhaler. So not worth. Most of these buffs you'll get from these quests aren't really useful. I'll note the ones that are. <laughs> it's 15 minutes of 5 precision and 5 strength. Wow. It's kind of like a buff that's like, yeah, I guess that's better than nothing. All right. Here's Toggy. Nice Trandoshan. What do you want? I have a package from you from Dunier. That's great. I've been waiting on this. I'll translate the delivery code to Dunier. And now we're waiting for a call. But we'll mount up while that's going on. I just got the payment from Toggy. Good job. I just need you to do one, one more thing for me. I need you to go to the White Thranta shipping offices and pick up a package for me. Here's the location. And now uh, these offices should be pretty familiar for a lot of people as it's the first main... Um, if you don't do the mayor quest line, which takes you into this cave over here up in the upper left, it's the first um, dungeon-y area of Tatooine you enter. And one of many, many bunkers that you will get acquainted with during the course of the Legacy Quest. I will say that once you get to Corellia, the bunker layouts do mix it up a little bit for what that's worth. But Tatooine and Naboo are going to have a lot of the similar bunkers. Everyone kind of went to the same builder, I guess. Alright, so here's a uh, white Thranta office. We're just going to go ahead right in. Why is this... It's a guy in full Mando walking around. We're going to come down here. I think we have to talk to this person. Yeah. Hello, how may I help you? I'm here to pick up a package for Denier. I have that package right here. Here you go. And I have transmitted the pickup code to Denier. Have a nice day. All right. So we're going to wait for Denier. I think we have to go back. Yep. I just got the... Pick up confirmation code from the White Thranta receptionist. Bring that to me and we can get you a fee all worked out. Here's a return for the location's convenience. Great job out there. Thanks. Now about that fee you promised me. There it is. Good pay for good work. Wow, 2,000 credits. Got any other jobs? I don't, but Bid wants you to talk to Ramos. Where can I find Ramos? I'll load the directions into your data pad. Ramos is the inside contact Vorok told you about. Help him disrupt the activities at the White Thranter shipping office. He may not recognize you at first. So if you ever, like, don't accept the quest for any of these parts, just go back and talk to the person that you talked to last time. So if I hit cancel here, talk to this guy. Have you talked to Ramos yet? No, not yet. 
Do you need your action guns? Yes, that would be helpful. And then you could accept it again. That's the typical fail safe for these. You can also try and find the next NPC you're supposed to talk to. That does work in some cases. So here's Ramos. So Han says you're good people. How do you know Han? Wait, how do you know me? Han told me a bit about you. He said I could trust you to do some sensitive work. What kind of work? There's a shipping company just outside Moss Eisley called White Branta. I have information that leads me to believe they aren't a simple shipping company. So what do you want me to do? Nothing difficult. I just need you to plant a surveillance fire so I can see if the rumors are true. Or if it's just a harmless shipping company. That's it. You don't want me to do anything else? Like murder? Well, if it does turn out to be more, I could use your help on the inside. Oh, seems easy enough. I'll help out. Great. Here's the information in the virus code. Just insert it into their personal access terminal. Will do. All right, Ramos thinks that the manager for the White Thrancher Shipping Company, a front for Java smuggling activities, is conducting unusual medical research. Ramos needs more information on this research. Ramos is a good slicer that has created a surveillance virus to tap into the company's records. Plant the virus by using the public access terminal inside the company. There's an extra space after research. Except. All right, so we're heading back. I don't know why this waypoint's yellow. They're usually they're usually blue. Oh yeah, favor the elders. <laughs> and we'll put the glucose metabolite inhaler back on. It'll help us going up and down these ramps. All right. So the pura per, per oh apparently there's this elevator just to leave here. I never noticed that. Maybe the legends staff added it. Either way, all right. Plant the virus in the public access terminal. I think it's this one. <laughs> Public access terminal. Public access terminal. Welcome to the White Thranch Shipping Company, providing safe and secure shipping galaxy wide. I like how the options are access customer information directory, deploy surveillance virus, <laughs> data received, main menu. Thanks for the confirmation of receiving my virus. It deployed. Okay, let me calibrate the terminal. Just a second. Okay, I have the link. It's coming in strong. Give me a bit to do in the data search. I'll get back to you in a few seconds. Looks like this place is using a lot of back data. I need you to go find out why. You need to download some data from the medical computer. I can't get you the password. But strangely enough, I did find the security terminal password. I still need that information on where it is. I need you to get the medical computer password from the security terminal. Okay. So let's go to the security terminal. We gotta go deeper into this base though. And the enemies don't like us back here. So we're just gonna get rid of them before they uh, jump us because they're definitely going to. Now let's talk about the security terminal. Warning, White Thrant Security Network unauthorized access forbidden. All unauthorized users log off now. Enter password. Welcome to White Thrant Shipping Security Network. Please enter a request. Let's review the high security files. Please enter restricted topic for review. Genetic research data. That sounds like something I might use uh, back to. Latest progress entry from research staff, the genetic modification agent is meeting some resistance in 45% of tested subjects. New serum supply will be ready in 72 hours. New subjects will be made available for further testing. Expect improved results. Uh, no. How about horrible traffic surveillance? Latest progress entry from the surveillance staff, Mos Eisley report, normal orbital traffic with expected smuggler activities. One anomalous arrival from Tansari Point Station. Vum Volimo. Wow, we're in here. Subject has been connected with Han Solo and the package. Package has been delivered to drop off point. Continue surveillance of the subject. Uh, maybe personnel records. Enter false ID code. Okay, not, not going to work. How about security me measures? Let's do the medical facility status. Medical facility status, back to status, 66% optimal supplies, stim status at 85, research subjects 8, closed medical computer, password, bleh, we don't really remember that. Next schedule, resupply, 72 hours. So our contact here says, that's it. The password for the medical computer is bleh. Go to the medical computer and find the download and take it to me. Wow, thanks for following JS Space, or J Space Man. I hope starting out has been going well for you. Let's just get rid of these guys, because I already know they're going to attack me. All right, again, I know this guy's gonna, these guys are going to attack me, so let's just get rid of them. All 
All right. So if we access the medical data council, white branch and medical computer, please enter. Enter password, select areas of interest. Let's do a review project status. And update the quest. Medical research progressing rapidly. Current STEM test batch 644 and with some subjects. Um, looking at the rest of these, it just gives some stuff like subject 30 is an entertainer with a high level of fitness, high level blah, blah, blah. It just, it's to build some plot here about this, but you don't, we're not going to read all this. <laughs> At least I'm not going to. Ramos thinks that the manager, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So Ramos said that the data is conclusive during the white franta company are our front for legal activities for Jabba the Hutt. We must shut this place down. See if you can talk to Durr. I don't think he will be very responsive, but we should give him a chance to answer for his crimes. If he doesn't, not cooperate, however, you may have to use force. All right, so we got to go defeat Durr. We also leveled up. So let's do the, our level up really quick. So you notice if you open the profession window, I won't get anything new here to level 14. But if we open up the expertise, we have another point to spend. So let's go to squad command. Now, next I want to get focus fire. But you'll notice that in your profession window, if you go to, yep, level seven, we got plus one to maintain group buffs. Tactics counts as one group buff. So I don't think we can maintain more than one group buff right now. So I need to put a point in leadership so I can maintain at least one more. So we'll put a point in there, commit it, and we'll get focus fire at the next level. You enjoyed your start of the game. You did goof, though, because you made a spy for your first character. When you left the station and dumped all those free items, you used the holocron boost to 90 accidentally. I've heard some people use the 90 boost accidentally, but at least you used it on your um, combat character. I've had people, I know people to accidentally use their 90 boost on their crafter or entertainer, which the crafter you can get to 90 in 30 minutes, and the entertainer you can get to 90 in like two hours of AFKing. So that's more of a shame. Yeah, I still recommend making a character and actually playing through the game at level. It'll teach you a lot of things, get you oriented to a lot of the stuff and etc. Oh, you bastard. It's it's the it might seem slow sometimes, and you don't have to quest all the way to 90. At any point you could just stop and go AFK at like one of the normal AFK leveling locations if you're really fed up with questing in this game, but I do recommend playing it for a little bit to get oriented. So we have to find Durr. I know Durr roams around down here, so we can look for him, but let's do something that'll make life a little easier. I'm going to move this window out here. If you type the command forward slash target, you can acquire targets based on what's at the front of their name. So I know this character's named Durr. So if I do forward slash target Durr, you see that I have a copy of the target Durr, and he's right there. So if you ever have a hard time finding Durr because he roams around, just do forward slash target. And there he is. So we're going to go beat up Durr now. If he's uh, if Durr's not around, like you're not acquiring our target, you don't see him, he's probably spawning in. And when he does spawn in, he spawns down this ramp down here in these personal quarters area. So you did notice you spend more time doing legacy quests than using the normal mission terminal, the class terminal. Yeah, I don't like doing terminal missions, so I usually don't bother. <laughs> They're fine if you need a stipend of cash or you really just want to boost XP to cover some gaps, but I'd rather just quest. So Dur dropped this. We got to read this, though. It doesn't really tell us anything, it looks like. But our contact here will come over and say, so Dur was stealing from his own company. Maybe we can get the this boss of his to answer for their shared crimes use the password on the payroll terminal in the front of the office to find out how Deer's bosses all right so we got to go all the way back to the beginning beginning of the facility this guy's gonna attack me so let's just get rid of him so for those uh, who may not know on legends you can do 15 mission terminal missions a day and get rewards for them. You can keep doing mission terminals after that, but they'll stop giving you credits and XP bonuses. But each mission terminal uh, gives you about 10% of your level, so you can get 150% XP per day. I was I read that it also applies to pets if you're leveling Beast Mastery, but I think it only applies if you still get XP yourself from the terminal. I tried that at level 90 and it wasn't working for pet XP. And honestly, I don't even know how that works, but that's what I heard. 
but it definitely works for your character. So if you do want to get some XP, like say that you're level 59 and you really want to be 60 before starting Nims theme part, you can go do like, you know, 10 terminal missions, get over level 60, then go start Nims. But here we are at the company payroll terminal. All right there into payroll terminal. Please enter employee code to access your account. We're going to enter Durr's code. Greetings, Durr. Please. <laughs> Sorry, his name's funny. Durr. Please select from the following actions. Uh, let's make a bank transfer. Uh, let's put in my bank account. <laughs> Aw. Enter my employee code. Uh, okay, go back. I will uh, check pay balance. All payments received, no outstanding balance. I'm just trying to like do a little wire fraud, okay? Everybody leave me alone. Let's edit his personal records. His manager is Brock ZM, First Imperial Bank of Core. It does mean core, not Corellia Core, like Core World. Sad is good. All right. Okay, so that's what you could do. So at this terminal, I did it too soon. You can send yourself money. Transfer all available funds. Yay, I gave my I appropriate some funds. Is it wire fraud if you steal from somebody who illicitly had the money in the first place? Anyways, I gave myself 5,000 credits. Yay. Guess that's what we had to do anyways. Transfer request of 5,000 credits, Imperial credits from White Thrant to escrow to your account. Thanks for using the first Galactic Reserve of Lord Mantel. Have a nice day. All right, now we can go slice the security terminal. Read the personal records are dur. Dur erotic. Observation Dura has been reprimanded on several occasions for lax security. Recent surveillance gives so many evidence of embezzlement. We'll continue surveillance. Ah, oh, they were onto him. All right, so we got to go back down and check his personal terminal now. I'm going to call my bull buddy. I'm feeling lonely. If anyone has a name for my either of my familiars, my bull or my governor, let me know. I haven't named them yet, and we can name them. Uh, this way. I love the overhead map. love the M key. <laughs> it's so useful. When I, Griffin always teases me because he's like, when we're playing, he look at my stream. He's like, you just play looking at the map, don't you? I'm like, yeah. I, I hardly ever like actually look around. <laughs> I'm trying to play more with it off because I think it's a little bit more visually uh, engaging if I have it off. I'm just going to ignore it. If they follow me all the way down here, then we'll beat them up. Yes, yeah, so I believe Durr spawns down here if you ever need to find him. And you don't see him around immediately. All right, personal data terminal for Durr. Unless I start getting shot by this guy. Durrotic's personal data terminal. Please enter password. Um, com directory. Personal journal. 174. 175. Breakout. I know I am infected this time. I can feel the soreness in my throat. It starts like any other cold. We'll never know. We're dying by the time the really bad symptoms hit. We'll already be in a state of deep dementia. We'll just die crazy. What? The doctor said I don't have the virus. What, do, what does he know? I bet he's paid by Jabba to say whatever keeps us working. I'm going to have to steal a bit more from his account when I get the chance. Let them die here. I am out of here as soon as I have enough of their money. Well, too bad I already killed you, Dur. Finally, the last TEP subject infected with last week's breakout has been terminated. I hate these foul-ups. It's bad enough we risk the progress of this project, but the personnel risk is unacceptable. On a better note, I was finally able to slice Brock's password to his personal data terminal. Okay. Now we gotta go look at Brock's dirty laundry. Let's kill this guy. He's gonna want to jump me. Brock's EM's personal data. Enter Brock's password. Please check from the following options. Uh, personal journal. Another breakout today. These mistakes are really cutting into my profitability. I need this place to make some cash. I'm going to need plenty to fight off Jabba after I take over his hold on this place. I'm sure he's going to want it back bad enough to send a lot of his men. I need to be ready. Dirt was caught slicing the payroll terminal again. I need to get rid of this guy once and for all. If he cuts into my slush fund for breaking away from Jabba, I'm going to seal him up in a back to tank and drown him. 
Jabba contacted me directly about the future of this facility. He was asking some very strange questions. I'm starting to think someone is aware of my plan and are telling them to Jabba, I need to speed up this takeover timetable. And my contact said, looks like we found the boss. He sounds like a real nice guy. I don't think it will happen, but try to get him out. Give him give up peacefully. I don't think he's going to do that. I don't think this quest is going to give me that option either. Here's Brock. There he is. Look at this discount Luke Skywalker ass. All right. Uh, can you please give up? Oh, it looks like my only option is to attack. Well, I guess he'll give up when he's dead. Quit that shit. Alright. So we've completed the quest. This is one where you get to choose your reward. We can choose from um, basically any weapon type. Um, hey, I'm trying to do a I'm trying to do a thing here, man. Um we're going melee and we're going one-handed melee, so I'm gonna be picking the I think the sword is one-handed melee. I believe the katana is two-handed. The lance is a uh, pole arm and the necklace is an arm. So we're going to take the sword. And we leveled up to 13. Let's see. Yeah, one-handed melee. Oh, this quest for reward item does require a bio link, interestingly. So let's do that. Cannot buy a link an item. You can't. Oh, I didn't even see its level 14 requirement. <laughs> You can't buy link items, you can't equip. <laughs> totally forgot. All right. So our contact said, it's too bad about Brock, but I didn't really want him. Uh, I didn't really think he would turn himself up in or in. I used the data in the personal journal to try and find that package you're looking for. Apparently the Empire and the Alliance already have people assigned to find it. I'll give you their contact information. Go see what leads they might have for you. All right. So this is part of the legacy quest where you have to pick a side. So from this side on, or this part on, you're going to be aiding in the legacy quest of either the Empire or the Rebellion. Doing so will give you faction points for that faction, which will enable you to join them if you didn't get the 200 for the faction you wanted from Tansari Point Station. You also don't have to join either, but you do have to pick to aid one. So I could stay neutral the entire time I'm through the legacy quest, but I still need to pick one of these two groups to aid. But instead of going back to town and taking a shuttle, let's drive out of town and use our instant transit vehicle all right so i'm gonna call it the rattle trap and basically we can go to bastine to, uh, to meet commander barez who is the imperial contact or you can go to anchorhead and meet captain carla bastra uh we're rebels so we're gonna go to anchorhead one thing that i want to also show is that i do have a crafted set of armor for my character and while i can't equip armor yet and while these items count as armor pieces, I don't think for the purpose of equipping them, I don't think it blocks me. So, for example, I have these Rebel Armor Assault Gloves that have stats that are much better than the gloves that I have. Let's see. Can I wear these? Yeah, I can. Cool. So I can put on uh, some of my armor pieces. <laughs> the gloves and the boots. So we'll throw those on. Uh, I look a little silly right now, but once we get to level 22 and I can wear more armor, we'll be able to make myself look a little less silly. So let's go over here and let's go talk to Carla. Anytime you travel, by the way, your uh, familiar buffs going to be wiped. So if you want your familiar buff applied, you will have to recall them. That's why I put them on a toolbar. So this Imperial Intelligence sending younglings to check up on me now. I am not an Imperial agent. I was the one who helped Solo. Sorry to mean to bother you. Okay. Your biometrics check out with those sent to me by Inaldra. So why are you here? I've decided that I should help the Rebellion. I really have nothing to back up your word that you aren't an Imperial agent, but right now the imps know the faces of most of my agents, and I do need some help. So I could say, oh, I'll do my best for help. Not sure if I want to do this. I want to help, but I need some more experience. What does that do? Talk to Ordo around the corner. He melt. Ordo. What do you have me do? I'm looking to help the Rebellion. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are looking to help out once we win the Battle of Yavin 4. Again, reminder, this takes place during Episode 5. So, first Death Stars are already stripe. 
where were you before? Never mind. Wow, this guy's a gatekeeper. I do have some low security jobs I can uh, farm out. Here's a list. Anything to strike your fancy. I can help hunting bants there. Or I could retrieve those chips and portraying the Valerian Depot is something I can handle. Well, if you don't, well, my health will just leave. I've actually never done these. Let's do something. Let's do the Valerian Depot. The Valerians have recovered a leg of an ATAT and have it at their depot in the mountains. I want you to remove the RX-8 modulator, analyze its circuitry, and then transmit that information to me. Consider it done. Good, the location and the other mission information has been uploaded to your datapad. Huh. Yeah, I've never done these. I usually just do what I would assume most players do and just smash through a uh, quest dialogue. I do want to talk to somebody else before we leave. So we go up the hill from the shuttle port. And we talked to Sor... No, Quan? I don't remember. It's one of these two. Maybe... Oh, let me try Sorna first. Oh, yeah. It's her. Oh, dear. I'll never make it out that far this time. Can I help? Oh, would you? I have placed flowers on the gray side of a good friend every year. I've tried several times already this year, and I always seem to get turned back. Could you please take these flowers to the gravestone mark Shmi at the old Lars homestead? I can do that for you. Be careful. I don't want you to get hurt helping me. I'll be fine. Don't you worry about me. And then she just thinks so much. Um, for those who don't remember, Shmi is Anakin's mom. I don't remember. This guy, I think we talk to you later. Yeah. We don't need to talk to him right now. We're going to not worry about the flowers for now. I think. Unless they're right next to the Valerian Depot. Oh, it's the Valerian Depot over there. Okay. Well, we can actually go place flowers at the very site. So let's go there first. So see that the, all of a sudden the player structure stopped? That's because we're approaching a area where there's restricted building. Points of interest, like the large homestead, which you can view on your world map by going to points of interest tab. They usually have a radius around them where they can't build player structures. That's not always the case, but... Let's see. So we got a badge for discovering Lars's homestead. Lars homestead. And if we click Shmi's gravestone... We complete it, and we get a buff. Uh, the buff is called Gracer Shmi. It lasts for an hour. The mother of the balance has blessed you, and we get 60 to our strength, stamina, agility, precision, luck. It's a pretty good buff, especially at this level. Unfortunately, you can't get it again. Uh, it's a one-time deal. So you cannot use it for some min-max shenanigans. Also, it might have overwrote my glucose metabolite inhaler. Interesting. Well, it's all right. We don't need it right now, or else we're driving around flat desert. All right, we can take a shortcut. So this is outside Bastine. I think I had to fly, drive a little bit away from the point of interest, but we'll just summon our rattle trap, and we'll just go to the Bastine shuttle port here. Save ourselves a little time. Yeah. We saved ourselves a little bit of driving there. Always looking for ways to save us a little bit of time. We have over 7,000 HP as level 13. <laughs> Shout out to Gear and Buffs. All right, so there's the Valerian Depot. Some of you might be familiar with this, so we'll see it again later. We got to get in, though. Unfortunately, these fences are, I think, a little too high for me to get over. But we'll just, uh, you know, drive through here. Ah, there's the leg. Cool. That's it. Wow. Wow, you got a snare, dude? You're gonna make me move a little bit slower? Rude. Alright, so the comm said, Hold on a second, pick up a radio transmission from your area. It looks like you were spotted by a mercenary recon team. You have to intercept this team before they reach the Imperial outpost at Bastine and report on what you're doing. Alright, well. From leveling up, we got Paint Target Mark II, so that ability got a little stronger. Let's fly out of here. Let's go intercept this team. And at level 14, we get another expertise point because it's every other level. And we can get focus fire. Yes. We have another buff. 
We can't equip it. We can't activate it while driving, but we will later. I'm going the wrong way. They're on the other side of the Bastine. Okay. So you notice that an item was added in my inventory. If I radio this, it'll activate a... I can inspect it. Some of these items you'll get while leveling up will give you quests. I believe this one will, so we'll do that after I complete this one. Saving those expertise points right now for your bounty hunter. Uh, yeah. So, expertise points can be reset. Um, where the hell are these guys? These guys? Wow, they are actually kind of walking in a line. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, let's activate Focus Fire. So, Focus Fire will increase our chance to bypass an opponent's armor, so strike through value, or strike through chance by 2%. We'll increase the amount of val strike through value by 15% and crit chance 2%. Very good. Keep beating these guys up, though. <laughs> yeah, they're surely walking to the Imperial. They're just walking in a line back and forth. They must be lost. Okay. Let's see what the quest update is here. The signal has been stopped. I'm no longer receiving tra the transmissions. I don't think they were able to contact the base. Good work. So now he wants us to go back to him. We'll go back to him in a minute, but on the topic of expertise. So, Spaceman, you don't need to worry about too much about uh, permanence with your builds. Uh, if you ever need to reset your expertise, if you go to the Moss Isley starport, you can also go to the Feed spaceport or the Coronet spaceport. Outside the front of those structures, you will see an NPC called a Profession Counselor. And if you speak to the Profession Counselor, she'll let you not only change your profession, but she can also reset your expertise. So the first profession change is free, and the first five expertise resets are free. I think it's five or is it ten? Yeah, it's five. First five are free. And then every month, those will decay by one. So if you used your free profession change and the next one costs you 100k if you wait into the first of the month it'd be free again so it's the same thing with expertise changes if you use your five free ones and then if you wait to next month it'll decay back down to free the expertise costs are really low though so if you do commit points like say i did get tactics and focus fire and i don't think it's what i want to hold on to i could reset this get my seven points back and put them elsewhere and i will be doing that later once we get more aoe's but officer doesn't get aoe's for a while for some reason but we got to go back to anchor head so let's use the um shuttle like a good paying patron instead of our travel vehicle so if i go to a ticket terminal go to tatooine let's buy a ticket to anchor head shuttle port cost us 450 credits what a robbery but if i buy that ticket and i motor over this way as long as the shuttle's parked here you can use the shuttle if it's not parked here we'd have to wait a minute for it to land well up to a minute we click on the ticket collector. If you have more than one ticket, a window will pop up. You can select them, which ticket to use. But we only have one, so it takes us right to Anchorhead. And now we gotta go talk to Ordo. So here's Ordo. Hey, you really did a number on those mercs. I can't say I'm sorry they are gone. They've been a thorn in our side for some time now. Well, they won't be causing you any more problems. Thanks for the help. And he gave me some frag grenades. What other jobs do you have? This is what I have to do. Let's help with Banthas. Imperials are using them to increase the number of patrols. They seem to have used up all the dewbacks in the area. I need you to call the local herd. Sounds like a plan. Good. Here's the information that you need. Good hunting. Yeah, I've never done missions for Ordo. That's why I'm messing around with it. We can mess around with grenades, too. <laughs> Let's do some grenades. So grenades are item, uh, I guess, usable items you can find. And... Um, Think of them as little AOEs in your pocket. They're not very common. You don't really use them for much, so don't work. Don't get used to them. Apparently that, I think that sick I flew over once, so whatever, you can come get some. Well, now we have an AOE with the grenades. Throw a grenade out. Wow, I barely did anything. Uh. Well. 
Seems like they have short cooldowns. Like, I can't spam this, can I? Yeah, there's a brief cooldown before I can throw another. Uh, I guess yeah, you could precast it. So, like, for example, on this Bantha, if I throw a grenade out, it won't immediately start combat. So there's that, I guess. Wow. See, I'm not worried about our levels. Between the XP buffs, this is going to rain XP on us. Yeah, thank you. I did actually equip it while we were uh, driving over here. Also, so while you're killing creatures, you're going to loot, loot a lot of these Isomeraz enzymes. Um, any Isomeraz enzyme below 89.33% isn't worth keeping uh, for the majority of players. So just defeat these things. Um, you can get higher value Isomeraz enzymes off higher level creatures, so you're not going to have to really worry about that so just delete these <laughs> i'll get another collection item pyrotechnic material sure what do you want uh i creature this chips i'll do it oh yeah i guess i should i'll read what he was saying on the way over the, um, we want to break the terrorist tactical code. I do. To do that, we need you to take out the terrorists, collect the code chips from their comm links, and download their encryption keys. Send those keys to me. Here's the information what to do. The rebellion trying to stop some terrorists. Very cool of them. Uh, let's use a grenade. Because why not? Man, what is the air? Did they even tell you what the area effective? I feel like it's really small. Like, will it hit the other two? Oh, it did. All right. Not bad. Not bad range on the nade. All right. Well, this is the case of we got bad luck. Uh, we needed five items and we didn't find five items. So now we got to wait, which is always a good time to. See if there's anything in your inventory that you want to junk. I already junked that painting as we came over. You might loot dice. You can always roll dice. Let's roll four ten-sided die. I got a six, a nine, nice, and a four and an eight. We'll have a few of these quests that we encounter where it's just... Man, I hope you find the item. While we're waiting, we can inspect my officer's report. That I got for hitting level 14 it gives us a quest. Your first officer mission, and it gives us an issue officer backpack, but we already have one. What the f? Given to you by Tatooine by Ellis Artson. Okay. Go speak with Ellis. Well, we will in a minute. I have to keep farming these terrorists for codes. Wow. Level 16. See, we're just flying. I'm not even trying to farm these guys, it's, they're making me do it. Let's spend our next expertise point. I want Pistol Drill Master, and we need to be able to maintain a third buff, so let's train leadership. And then let's show how good our leadership is by murdering this man. Nothing found. Wow. Not that good of a leader, I guess. Nothing found. Maybe don't do Ordo's mission, at least not the chip one. Oh my goodness. Am I going to get level 17 before I find this chip? Oh, we got it. All right, let's get the hell out of here. I don't care that that one's shooting me. Should give our code crackers the leg up and give the terrorist tackle network here in Tassie means success. He says, I really appreciate it, but things are heating up with the ups. I got to I got to start backing off on handing out missions. I have let a lot of those know, none, know what you've done. Good work. Okay, let's see. Does Carla say anything else? Nope, it's the same dialogue. All right, well, she doesn't acknowledge all the aid we just gave the Rebellion, eh, but whatever. 
So she says a shipment that I am interested in has been acquired by three different groups. A Jawa trading party, Valerians, and Darklighters. Where's my Oxford comma? Anyways, here's the information that I have. Let's start with the Jawas first. They are on a trade circuit. Here is their last known location. This is like a list. It will be done in a flash. Just get it done. Wow, rude. Mm, Hugo's body spray. All right, now we can go talk to the uh, Tashi Station guy. Welcome to Tashi Station. If you are looking to get the most out of your speeder, I have what you need. I am more interested in the purchase you made of some Jawas. Yeah, I took in a shipment, but my warehouse manager, Janus, handled the details. I need to talk with him. Just dump info on my data pad. Here's location. Just get him the parts. He should be able to give you the information. He got it. I was wondering if you could help out an old friend named Sorna as well. I have already spoken with her. Excellent. You are most efficient. Damn straight I am. Also, I just realized my entertainer buff only has like an hour left. I think... So if an entertainer... So when you're doing that double entertainer strategy, if one entertainer stops performing while you're getting buffed, you, it resets your inner, your tick timer. So I actually only ended up with, it looks like, maybe two hours of a buff. So either during or after the break, uh, which will be in a little bit here, we'll uh, go refresh that buff. Because I am going to be playing for more than one more hour. <laughs> I guess the bright side is I'll be able to refresh the duration on my Perfectly Inspired, which runs out in a minute. So there's that, at least. The coronets that Quan gave you are centered on that column of rising smoke. You should be careful approaching this area. Desert demons. I don't have to destroy these guys, but they're going to attack me anyway, so. As you can see, they're level 13. We really didn't need to do those extra quests. But I just never did them, so I want to try. All right, there's Janus's corpse. Let's check out his data pad. You retrieve the data for the part of the Java cargo that Tashi Station purchased. The data pad also includes the Sandcrawler's next stop, a place called Lars's Homestead. You should call Quan and let him know where you can pick up the body. What do you mean he's dead? I just talked to him this morning. This is getting out of hand. Here's your reward. I want nothing more to do with this. We take a uh, Hugh's body spray or the plasma shield generator. Let's take the shield generator. Oh, wow. We leveled up. Cool. Visit Lars's homestead. Um, you know what? It's probably faster to ITV. Let's go to Mosfara, I guess. Player City. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, by default, the numlock key is to turn on auto walk or auto drive. So basically, it is drives your character forward that you can always rebind it in the key map settings i leave it on unlock because that's just what i'm used to even though it'd probably be better on anything else even space bar so zeph help me those droids i bought are destroying everything just tell me what to do run over to my harvesters and disarm the explosives on them whoa they planted bombs and they're gonna go off in 55 seconds golly gee Maybe if I just ignore the droids and click the harvester. Wow, easy. These guys are level 16. Spicy. We jump from 13 to 16 really fast. Oh, how can I thank you? Those droids were going to ruin me. Just let me have an inventory of what you bought from the Jawas. Sure, here you go. Just download what you need. So again, it gives us Steph's data pack in our inventory. Got a download inventory. You retrieve the data on what Zeph purchased from the sand crawler. It looks like you can intercept the sand crawler before it gets to the next stop. It gives us more buff items. Oh, right. Uh, so you can get either one. I think scope gives you precision and the stabilizer maybe gives you strength or something. I don't know. We'll just take the stabilizer. We're not going to use it anyways. So we gotta go intercept the sand crawler, which is right outside that player city. But that player city, I know, does not have a shuttle port. So we're gonna have to drive there. Looks like you found the sand crawler, but it 
so did someone else. The blaster patterns are too random to be stormtroopers, and the single column vampa tracks can mean only one thing. Sand people. Oh, is this on? Help! Emergency. This is a sand crawler. 345. Broadcasting emergency frequently. We are under attack from Tusken Raiders. Setting emergency beacon. Help! Emergency. Where's the Tusken Raiders? Looks pretty... Looks like you're just vibing over here. FA2PO. Oh, I was sure we were doomed. What? Oh, yes. My master says that you have been very kind to help. The Tuscans have looted much of our cargo. They have also looted our data desk with our software encryption keys. We need those keys. What do you need the encryption keys? Without those keys, my master cannot access his computers. Unlock any of these mag-locked cargo containers or activate any of his droids. He is very desperate. He is so agitated that I can barely understand him as it is. Of course I will help. There are four of them that must be recovered. I fear the Tuscans are watching them as uh, wearing them as decoration. The cases are very bright and shiny. I'm on my way. And here are the Tuscan Outriders. So we gotta defeat six of them, loot four keys. Hopefully we have better luck on these keys than we did on the chips for those terrorists outside Anchor Head. Wow, loot large crate of water. Guess this doesn't do anything. Oh, thank the maker. Hmm. I mean, my master says he wishes to reward you and offers you a chance, a choice of these items. Thank you. I'd like to have a brief look at your inventory. Something might interest me. My master says, of course, with the encryption key that you recovered, we once again have access to our database. Here's a complete inventory of what we had at the start of our journey. The things we sold are listed, but most of the rest of the inventory survived the raid. Thank you. Just return the data pad when you're done. That was Leo's data pad. Who knew the Jawas could have scavenged that much? Next, I need you to go to a Valerian base, uploading the base information. Choose your reward. Toxic weapon spare, capacitor, overcharger. Again, these don't really matter. Uh, the spray one's melee, though, so I guess we'll take that. We're level 18! Alright, so we got a couple things here. So, group waypoint is also known as GPP. Officer, you can place it as a leader of a group, or any officer can place it. I don't really need it on my bar, though. Uh, we got Tactics Mark 2, but we are going to Mark 4 from Expertise, so I don't really need that. And then, <laughs> for the memes, for the fans, we will call in a field supply drop. Um, so, <laughs> field supplies is an ability officers get, and it gets better as you level up, but you can also get Expertise for it. Can I call here? Yep. Where you can go out. You have to have a space where it's open outside. You can't be inside. You hit the ability and you wait. And I think it always... There it is. A Lambda shuttle will fly down. And it will drop a box on the spot you called it. I believe... This one might have a longer cooldown. But if you open the box, you get all these little goodies in it. So we got more Stimpak A's, which you'll be familiar with from... And sorry, points. So I guess I'll take those. We have some frag grenades that we can use as um, uh, AOE since we don't have a proper AOE yet. Uh, I don't really care about these food buffs. Tackle Serum B? What does it even do? And we got a Field Stim Pack B. What do these all do? And what buff? Alright, so if I. I think these are just food buffs, so I'm not going to even bother with these. We have a better food buff going. Impact B. Oh, this heals you. So this is a healing item like Stimpak A. Interesting. It's just for... Wait. Huh. So it's like a lower version of the tactical stuff you'd get from um, the higher level boxes. Your combat level's too low. I have to be level 3 to use these. 
Why can I get them at... Why do I get this ability at level 18 if I can't use them at a level 30? Can I use the grenades? Yeah, I can. <laughs> why the hell? <laughs> Whatever. Let's, uh... Can I... Should this knife... Is this knife better than the sword? Yes. So I have a bunch of crafted knives that I made for myself. And sometimes the crafted ones are not as good as the quest reward ones. The quest reward one's good. You definitely don't need to have crafted weapons for every couple of levels. I just did it for the memes. I have a weapon smith. So I just, I'm screwed. Why not? Uh, I guess I'll put this on here. I don't know, man. A lot of this stuff we're not going to even, it's not even going to psychologically rather register with us for in the future. All right, let's uh, see. Once I get a steam, we'll do that later. Let's go back to Isley here. I can't call an ITV here. We we're too close. This is the no ITV build zone, so we got to get out of here. Leg over here next to these player houses. Let's go back to Isley. We'll go to the shuttle port this time. So if you ever want to remove a buff from your bar for whatever reason, um, so I'm going to remove my entertainer buff because I'm going to go get a new one here. All you do is mouse over it with your cursor and you do right click. And now it's gone. Uh, I guess I should probably spend my expertise too. Uh, let's get Pistol Drill Master. And now we have all of our group buffs, which should Pistol Drill Master gives us. Uh, base damage output increased by 5%, action cost reduction by 5%, and if we are wielding a pistol, you get pistol damage increased by 5%. Not bad. Charm trinkets we can't use. A lot of gloves. Don't need those officer boosts. Don't need dice. Don't need that staff. Don't need those stims. Definitely don't need a bunch of creature eyes. The un unidentified serum vial cannot be used for reverse engineering. Let's get rid of that. Neither can any creature parts. So eyes, glands, hearts, etc. So the Nabooian sculpture base four section is part of that junk dealer kit assembly stuff I was talking about earlier when we were at the junk dealer. I'm not going to be worrying about that stuff. So let's get rid of it. Uh, comically, I could sell these foods, I guess, to the junk dealer. Uh, so I guess I'll just do that. And we don't need the white thrancha sword anyway anymore. The Viper Blade knife I have in my inventory is going to be better than that. The rest of this junk loot we have, I either can't get rid of via these means. Um or are useful for other things. So I'll mark some things. I don't want to sell the inhaler. But also with L18, was it 18? Yeah, well, our terrain negotiations max now, so I don't even need to use the inhaler anymore. So that didn't last long, now did it? So I haven't gotten buffed by entertainer yet because I thought I'd do a better job of highlighting which entertainer gives you that double buff, that extra XP. So if we go back in the canteen and look around. You see some people shooting some um, <clears throat> fireworks. But if you click on an entertainer like this one, and if you look at their buff bar and you see this um, blue spiral, you can see it's called Excellent Choreography, they will apply the extra buff. That... Alright, let's go refresh our med buff since we're right here. <laughs> I love the Viper Blades, it's because they're so tiny. This looks so dangerous for me to be running around with this knife all the time. And if anyone's wondering why, why do I always pick the Bothan to sit in front of? It's not because they're a Bothan. It's because some of the medics have faster macros than others. That medic's pretty fast at applying their macro. Okay. So this is the officer mission one, apparently. It's the item we got from expecting the officer report that we got a level 14. And we need to speak to Ellis, so this guy. So you're an officer, A. Eh? Uh, by name, yes, but I'm not employed by anybody. That's how they're making them these days, hmm? Yeah, they're making them in dog shape. Fine, we'll uh, we'll do what we can. What's wrong with me? I didn't say there was anything wrong with you, did I? No, I didn't. That's the problem. People don't listen anymore. I already hate this guy. Sorry, man. You're quick-tempered. I'm old. Chalk it up to that. Lazy. Not every old person's quick-tempered. What do you want? Right, if you're going to lead soldiers into battle, then you've got to know about battle. Oh, no shit. So what I want is for you to get yourself in a fight. I've been... <laughs> with who? 
Does it matter? Of course not. Fightin's fightin'. There ain't much more to it, but since you seem to have him set on a specified area, you try the crate cultists. I just want to say that, like, being a leader is not about murder and fighting all the time, but that's what this game thinks it is. So take that for what you will. So it's medic, entertainers, and food you need a buff. Yeah, so my buff order is basically get an entertainer buff, get my medic buff, and then have food on me. Uh, you've been seeing me drink Akaragum for the movement speed increase. If I wasn't using Akaragum, I'd be asking for a movement speed buff from the entertainer called Go With The Flow. Um, but yeah, those are the, your three things. All right, so we have to kill crate cultists. That's what this cave is. For those who are like, oh, what's in that cave you mentioned earlier near the uh, start of questing that the mayor can send you into? It's just a bunch of crate cultists. Which, you know, if I was going to join a cult, I would do it over a big lizard. That seems like a cool cult to join. I mean, no cult's cool to join, but, like, if I was going to join a cult. Yeah, but again, if anyone has any questions, like Cyclops did, feel free to ask them. Even if it's, like, I'm not on that topic at all. I'll answer your questions as best as possible, even if I need to go out of the way to show something. Wow, all these cultists. Bad they're not letting me join. So I'm gonna have to knife, knife them all to death. This is a Viper Blade, by the way. Canonically, this cuts through basically everything. You don't want to be up against a Viper weapon. In this game, though, it's just a normal melee weapon. <laughs> just, you know, got normal melee weapon stats. This and a club would do the same damage. Now, I want you to defeat the monks, five of them. They're the toughest. Okay, so we gotta find Crate Cult Monk. Zoom out my mini-map a little bit more, and let's mouse over. We could use their mini-map here. There, there's a monk. So the mini-map in the upper right, if you mouse over, you have these plus and minus, so you can zoom in or zoom out. I zoom, I zoomed it out a little bit so I could see those red dots, because I know they're cultists. And um, moused over them, saw their name, clicked on them to get the target, we're going to run down, and like, oh, there's a monk. Since the target wasn't working, let's do that. These are all, those are all the bone gnashers. We don't need to go down there. But this is why you always want to be either drinking Akaragum or running a movement speed increase from the entertainer go with the flow. You're going to see a lot of this just running through caves for a long time. <laughs> all right, what do you guys got going on down here? Come on. This person also wants some. Who are you? Huh? I don't have anything to say to you. And tell Fado to leave me and mine alone. Okay. He's part of another quest. And we're level 18. We still only have two offensive abilities. Whack. I think by now, Commando has like four or five. Because the commando gets all their grenades pretty fast, and you get focused fire, focus beam, and um, or not focus beam, focused fire, your uh, normal rifle move, and then you get what's it? It's like I think it's called sweeping fire, your cone of effect, which is massive. Yeah, and then uh, you can get cluster bomb immediately, so that's three. And then I think you get fragmentation or cryo grenade next, or stun grenade. I think you get cryo stun then frag. But yeah, I just remember by like level 15 even, I already had like five or six moves. <laughs> this one though, I got, yeah, I got like three buffs, but two of these are for my expertise. So, another two. Will the hotbar uh, ever be loaded with abilities? Uh, Yeah, at the end of the game. And it also varies from profession to profession. So like my smuggler is pretty loaded with abilities. My medic, not as much. Um, Commando has a good amount if you have all your grenades and rifle stuff on the bar. Otherwise, it'd be looking pretty thin. Yeah, BH doesn't get very many quickly. Like, you have, like, what? Assault. Um, what's the other one called? Like, Ambush or something? The one that snares. <laughs> and I think your self-heal. I guess I have my self-heal, too. I just haven't really needed to use it. Alice says, finished day. I knew you do it. You have it in you. That spark, I can see it. I always know. And then we get another issued officer backpack, even though we already got one. And he says, you did good work. That's it for that, I guess. All right. Well, that was... 
Interesting. All right, we gotta go to the Valerian Depot, which is uh, back outside Bastine for the Legacy Quest. You know, I could buy a ticket from the shuttle port, and that'd probably be faster, but um, I'm gonna go into cheapo mode. And we're gonna just fly out of Silly really fast and call my ITV. You'll see me doing this sometimes. It's not that I'm like penny pinching, it's more that like if the shuttle leaves while I'm about to go pull my call, like put my ticket in there, I'm not gonna wait a minute. I'm gonna I'll just drive out of the city anyways, so. I'm glad my stream's helping you learn how to use a few of the items. A lot of the items, so the way buffs work in the game is they all have um, hidden letters to them. And those letters correspond with certain slots that are available on your buff bar. So there's like buff A, buff B, buff C, buff D. So when you get a message and you try to use a buff that says a similar buff is already active, that means the you have a buff active that's already sharing that lettered slot so like for example i can't activate the toxic weapon spray because i already have a similar buff active i don't know what it is it's probably either shmi's grace or my f or maybe my familiar buff or even my food buff um so i can't activate the toxic weapon spray not a big deal the buffs i have active are likely a lot better than that is so all right Carla says, I need you to go into the depot and check manifests on each of those cargo pallets. Those pallets are part of the smuggled cargo from Tansari Station and may contain what we're looking for. Okay, and I already attracted some attention. These guys remember me from last time. So I could just drive in, but what we're going to we'll hop off. Because I need to start clicking some things in here. So let's hop off and just run in. If they want to find me, they can find me. It's their funeral. I'm going to be pretty overpowered up until I start trying to solo, like, group content in my 50s and 60s. <laughs> so. All right, so there's Proud Data Pad number one. Click that. Overhead map rules. This place is built kind of like a little mini maze. You got to work your way around these shipping containers. And unfortunately, they don't show up on the overhead map. Well, let's just go clockwise order. So let's run over to Pallet 2. I always wonder what that ATAT -AT leg for, and I guess it's for that side quest from Ordo. Hm. The more you know. Keep in mind, if I wanted more offensive abilities sooner, I could go down my first tree here, but I wouldn't get one until I can get all the way down on this, almost the bottom, which we're still quite a ways away. So, <laughs> for Officer, you're just going to learn abilities maybe a little bit slower than others, but you can, you can tell our abilities are pretty good. Paint Target's a really good debuff. So if you do fight something that's a little tankier, that's a great aid. And of course, our group buffs are killer. Like, our base stats are baller. Let's grab the sword again. Carlos says, good job on getting through the Valerian's Depot. The last place to check out is Dark Light of Storage Visibility. I'm opening some information now. It's all the way down there. Let's drive out of here. And while we do that, let's check out that weapon we got. So we got the Valerian Sword, which does 109 to 217 damage. Another player shouts to whoever that is. And it does 163 weapon DPS. Uh, let's see what mine does. Mine's a little bit better. The minimum damage of the Valyrian Sword is really good, though. So you can see, this is what I was going to talk about earlier. Um, let me go to White Sands first before I get into my reward weapons. are actually pretty good while leveling speech. So even though I crafted a bunch of weapons to aid in my gains... The early part of the game, I'd say probably up through level 40, if not even maybe 50, the weapons you get from Legacy Quest Rewards are actually pretty competitive with what you can get crafted. Um, so to demonstrate that, I forgot to call my familiar first. I love my bowl. Okay. So to demonstrate this, let's uh, examine the weapon I just got, the Valerian Sword. And let's compare it to... The weapon I have equipped, my level 18 crafted vibroblade. There, this one's a level 16 weapon. Keep that in mind. But despite that, it has a higher minimum base damage than my knife does. But since my minimum damage of my knife or my maximum damage of the knife is much higher, it's almost 40 points higher. The D the average DPS is a bit higher, so we'll keep using the knife. But keep in mind, this is a level 16 weapon, and it's almost outpacing my level 18 weapon, which I didn't slump on any materials on these weapons. This is basically as good as a level 18 melee weapon can get. 
minus putting something in the socket, which that's a waste of resources. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be finding some weapons that are going to be maybe outpace whatever crafted options I have. So we're going to be checking definitely rewards. Weapons dropped and looted? No, those are usually Garbo. So they might be able to outdo a reward weapon you're using if you haven't replaced one in a while. But generally, no. So this is a, can I do anything here? Sorry, no one gets to see Mrs. Darklighter. Or Mr. Dark. Who's Mr. Darklighter? Huff Darklighter, the head of the Darklighter estate. He's only the biggest business magnate in Tatooine. Where have you been? Never heard of him. Well, so I should take your head out of the sand and look around you. So what's this I was so upset about? He's very upset about a Tuscan rifle. It was on an ant he it was an antique and someone's taken it off plan. He wants to get it back, but isn't sure how to go about it. Where have you looked for the rifle? We have checked everywhere in Tatooine. Huff tried some of his contacts in Gurlia, but they were no help. Personally, I think it's on Naboo. What do you know about the rifle? I hear those some criminals got hold of it. The criminal element has lots to do with these things when stuff appears, you know. Maybe I can find it for you. That would be fantastic. If I were you, I'd start with Borbo the Hut on Naboo. He's sort of like Jabba, but not nearly as mean. He may know where it is. All right. So uh, we'll grab this side quest, but we're not going to be doing it for a while. I've actually never done this side quest, so that'll be new for me. I thought Darklighter Estate was just some place to be like, ooh, look, Darklighter. So I guess we'll do that later. We get to talk about another item that I have bequeathed to myself as my own benefactor in this game. Some of you may have spotted early in my backpack. So this is another instant travel vehicle. It is a snow speeder. This um, is considered not... So the Royal Naboo ship and the X-Wing, the TIE Fighter, and my rattle trap that I've been using are called just uh, ITVs. They're instant travel vehicles and they're travel ITV variants, which means they take you to shuttle ports or star ports on the planet you're currently on. No speeder ITV is called a destination ITV. And the way it works is it lets you store locations to travel to later. I know I'm going to be coming back to this dark lighter cave much later in the Tatooine Legacy Quest series, having done this before. So what we're going to do is I want to right click this in Grand Ability. And you can see that I have a snow speeder on my bar now. So if I click this, a snow speeder is summoned. And if I click this, you can see that I can log location. I'm going to click manage location. I'm going to set location. I'm going to say Dark Lighter Cave. So now when I click on the ITV, I can travel to the Dark Lighter Cave. I can click on it and travel there now, but it just takes me to here. So it's not much of a demonstration. So you'll see it later. The Snow Speeder can be as a reward from completing and earning Hoth tokens. You can do it as an Imperial and do Imperial Hoth or a Rebel and do Rebel Hoth. I believe it's 50 or 60 tokens. Um, alternatively, you can buy it from other players. It usually sells for around 11 million credits. But heading into the Dark Lighter Cave, we got to talk to the guard, which is actually outside. Never mind. Not heading in, heading out. Oh. You also see that too sometimes coming out of caves where it puts your position on top of the cave. Don't worry about it. There's Darky, Darcy, Darcy. They just blew their way in. Who did? Desert demons. I couldn't do anything to stop them, and they are cleaning the place out. How much time do we have before it's all cleared out? 15 minutes tops. I've got to run them. So you are just another looter. <laughs> I mean, you're like a gangster too. Why the fuck are you upset? Anyways, we we have more than 15 minutes. <laughs> but So no rush. I'm going to take my bull out because they're my friend. I need to come up with a name for him. I've heard this low lifter is for a later quest. Don't worry about it. But let's just start being a desert demons on the way down. If you want to learn more about ITVs and their variations, my How to Traverse the Galaxy YouTube video has uh, more of that. If you're curious, it goes over ITVs, shuttle ports, everything, buffs, etc. Level up, 19. Nothing special about that, though. Gotta wait till 20 for another expertise point. Alright, so we gotta find the pallets. So luckily we have already obje show object names on, which if you don't, open your settings, go to miscellaneous, and you'll see at the top of this checkbox, show all object names, turn that on. It makes it a lot easier to find interactable objects in the environment. We also have waypoints to them, which is handy here. You won't always have waypoints, though, to these things. 
It's a grenade. This is a good time to use one of our nades. Wow, that barely did dick for damage. <laughs> I mean, I know, I always say some damage, is, some damage is better than no damage, but damn, that was almost no damage. Alright, so, click that terminal. Like, let's see, can I get a comparison of that? Here, I'll do it here. Throw out a grenade. That grenade did 87 points of damage. My sure shot does 500. <laughs> That's your comparison. That grenade is orders of magnitude worse than whatever ability you have, but it doesn't cost action, and I already called in the field supplies anyways, but definitely not going to be going out of my way for these. <laughs> All right, we gotta keep going deeper in the cave here. What I'm really pumped for is getting a couple more levels and we'll have scatter and charge. And we'll have some more movement abilities. If I was leveling a bounty hunter, I'd probably be dedicating most of my points into the, if I wanted to go fast, into the first tree because power assisted sprint kicks ass. Um, did I just come from this way? I Yeah, yeah, this way. Uh, power assisted sprint kicks ass. But if you want to have more survivability and damage overall, I guess, then the second tree would be better. You can get uh, more base armor, you can work down and get reactive armor, you can improve your armor breaks, um, your nets if you really wanted to. But real winner in there is improving assault and getting, um, is it called relentless, like relentless onslaught? It's an ability that every time you're attacked, you fire back, which in PvE, that's obviously really good because everything's going to be attacking you constantly. In PvP, it's less of a win because people can see, oh, they turned that on. Well, let me just stop attacking for a hot second or whatever. Still helps in PvP, though, especially big PvP where people might not be paying as much attention or you're getting hit from AoEs more often. It's definitely not the scariest cooldown a bounty hunter has, but that's not saying much considering bounty hunters have a lot of really good cooldowns that make them scary. See if I could avoid some fights. I don't need to be killing all these people. You can see that with all the buffs that we have, the gear that I have done, I'm basically instant killing everything. That won't be the case forever. Once we get further in the game, you're gonna be having me you're gonna be seeing me having a little bit harder of a time. Specifically once we start getting to areas where we're killing creatures more than humanoids. Creatures are a little bit more dangerous than humanoids are, because one, melee attacks hurt, and two, they hurt more than range attacks. Um because the melee attacks don't have to deal with their shield generator. And then on top of that, uh, creatures have special abilities that are generally scarier than range. Range still has special abilities. Every once in a while, they might have a snare, a debuff. But typically, it's just a little extra action. I'm going to choose another weapon. They're all ranged. I'm going to take the carbine because it doesn't really matter. All right, so Carla says, good job getting the complete inventory. You need to get to my slicer, but he is freelancing for some criminals. You need to get to him using any means necessary. Oh yeah, she also said, well done, I created your account, I need to get this data in my slicer now. Alright, so we gotta head to Jem. Who's, I guess, outside? And at the rate we're getting XP, you can obviously tell I'm not worried about having enough levels to do anything. We're gonna be overleveled for basically the entirety of the level, uh, um, the entirety of the Legacy quest. We'll probably catch up in levels once we get around to doing certain parts of Kashyyyk. Maybe even Nims. But once we get to Nims, we're going to get an injection of XP. Just a ton of XP. <laughs> Alright, so the reason Carla said, uh, by any means necessary, is uh, Gems, I guess, working for some pretty hostile gun runners. So, they're going to probably shoot me anyway, so let's just get rid of them. Yeah, I don't really need action cost reduction given all the passes I have now. And then I only have two abilities to fire. I don't know how you did it, but Bastra will be happy you got me out of here. No problem. I need you to process this fast. So yes, Bastra said something about this before my job offer from these gun runners. Okay, give it to me. Here you go. Okay, let's try some filters, durables, ship, history, and droids. 
They're looking for a droid? Yes, didn't you know? Hmm. They must not have fully trusted you if they didn't tell you that what they were actually looking for. Apparently, this droid's carrying something extremely important. So, who has it? A jumping alert named Watto. Hmm. I'll upload the info into your data pad here and send you a copy to your hand right now. It's time for me to leave. Thanks. I can't respond while fighting. Ass. I didn't get to say thank you. Caller says, got the data from Lavar. Looks like I had the wrong impression about you. Most of my people are in hiding from the M, so you have to go to this Waddle character and retrieve the droid for me. We leveled up, though, so expertise point away. Um, we can't get down to here yet, so we're going to be putting points. So I still won't have an AoE for 10 more levels. <laughs> So we're just gonna not worry about it. Usually I'd be like, yeah, let's get that 25% da base damage. Let's get that crit. But we won't have any OE. So we could uh, get supply drops more often, but I don't care. Um, this direct and anger is not gonna be helpful here. This redirects a portion of the hate you generate on another player. Hate is generated when you heal during combat. Um, and it generates hate with anything you're in combat with or doing damage to an NPC, which that generates hate towards the NPC you dealt damage to. This is actually pretty useful for an officer for PvE, especially if you're like doing content with less players than suggested or you're doing something like the Hollow Knight Arena, because you're going to be doing a lot of AoE damage at level 90. So taking half of all the hate you generate and putting it on the tank, really good. But we're leveling by ourselves, so we literally can't use this. So the only thing out of this tree that will actually help what we're doing at this moment, since we have no AoE, I don't care about getting crappy field supplies faster. And we have already all the buffs we can need and all the buff duration up. Uh, we're just going <laughs> to increase your shot by 5%. <laughs> Surprise, I know. All right. I can't call for pickup here. Fuck. All right. So we got to go to Moss Espa. My favorite Moss Espa shuttle port is Moss Espa East. Not only is it really close to Wado, but it's also close to Bazaar Terminal if you need to use one. Alright, let's go over in here. Nice thing is there is a jug dealer in here if you want to sell some stuff. Um, clamps are not usable as reverse engineering. So I'll get rid of the clamps. Perception scope is a buff that we don't need. Fortitude stim, nope. Issued Officer Backpack, I uh, just don't need the Blue Iron Sword, don't need that stem. Improved Fortitude stem we can get rid of. I don't need any clothes, don't need that Carbine, don't need that Bandolier. Energy stem. I'm again, Gong Structure, another one of those Junk Dealer kits, not going to worry about it. Preferred Perception Scope, get rid of it. And that what we're going to do is we're going to mark some stuff not to sell. I want to keep all these junk loots because, again, I can sell them for more money to other players or use them for reverse engineering myself. So that, and then what do I have left in here? Some healing items. You'll get some junk items that are related to other drop kits. This is one of them. This V-screen technical reader, I don't care. Get rid of it. Oh, yeah, we got the classic bolt-resistant shirt. Oh, I got a better shirt on. Uh, we can't sell it though. I don't really care to display it. I don't think it's not a unique skin. We're just going to delete it. I bet we already have a similar buff active. Actually, let me call my bull out. Let's see. No, we were actually able to uh, increase our precision and strength by 10 and 10. Okay, this buff item's usable. Toxic spray. I wonder if that was that buff. I'm thinking about this too much. Anyways, all right. Let's talk to Watto. I guess I don't need to get behind it. That plant you can click on for a collection. I'm going to be doing collections on this character separate when I'm not doing them in one package because I'm going to be doing that as content for everybody. So I'm not going to click on that. I'm going to talk to Watto, though. I'm looking to purchase a droid. Oh, yeah. He said, good day, uh, good day to you. What do you want? I want to purchase a droid. Ah, he has come to the right place. I think I have many droids. I'm not doing the water voice, by the way. You can't make me. This is a special droid. Then you must be willing to pay a special price, no? The droid came in with a special cargo from Tansari Station. I know this droid. It has already been sold. You can't have it. Could you tell me you bought it? I must get this droid. What do you think I am? You come in here wanting me to give you directions to buy a droid from someone else? Well, it's not going to happen. 
Maybe I could do something for you in exchange? Ah, yes, maybe you could at that. There are these deadbeats that have something of mine. You could get it back from them, I think. Where are these deadbeats? Here in Moss Aspa still, I will show you on your data pad. I will return shortly. Good, thank you. And let's talk to Walt. Walt will give us another quest. I'm afraid you'll have to talk to Walt if you need something. I have too much to do. Yes, far too much to do. Easy there. You look overwhelmed. Is there anything I can help you with? You would be willing to help me out. Generous of you. My name is Walt. My boss, Watto, <laughs> Watto and Walt, has asked me to do a number of things in addition to my regular daily chores. The problem is I don't have the ability to personally take care of some of them. Maybe you are. I can handle what do you need done. I need to make sure you have the skills I need. First problem I have is Minox. Minox have been slipping into the junkyard and eating all the power cables at night. Minox, that should not be a problem. Normally, no. It would be something I could handle on my own. However, these are not your average Tatooine and Minox. This is a flock of uh, a flock of ra I need flack for the Minox. This is a flock of rather large Minox, giants even. A regular customer noted the location of their nest the other day. I have the coordinates if you're still willing to help. Giant Minox, huh? Well, I'll give it a shot. Where are the coordinates? I like the I like the no. Did you say giant Minox? Hmm. I think I've changed my mind. Good luck with those, most. Now nah, we got it. Oh, thank you. Here are the coordinates. Please come back when you have thinned out their flock enough to make them move on to another area. Twenty should be enough. I'll be back soon. Great, see you then. And then we wave. Not polite. Sippy sippy. All right. The other thing I want to do really fast is I think there's another quest I can get over in the slaves' quarters, but I don't for the life of me don't remember. Shouts are flying over walls. I'll never get tired of it. I think there's a guy over here, right? I might be insane. No, you know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of the uh, Tuscan quest line for the heroic. I'm conflating the two. Well, let's deal with the Minox since we're closer to those. This is a great place to come for Minox DNA if you ever need Minox DNA for incubation reasons. This is definitely one of those situations where I'm like, yeah, if you're leveling ranged, like a ranged character, uh, <laughs> having the, having that to chase down big beasts like that would be a little easier. I could always put a weapon on and shoot him and let him come to me, but... I love my knife. My actual favorite melee weapon group in the game are, is unarmed weapons because they carried over a lot of the animations used for Terrace Kazi Master from pre-CU and it looks really cool. Uh, melee smuggler and uh, entertainers have a lot of cool me unarmed melee animations. For those who might uh, have already recognized or maybe not, this is the Republic Commando backpack. It's unique to SWG Legends. It's a reward for Flashpoint tokens. I believe it's 3,000? 3,000, 4,000? Something like that. Um, it is modeled, obviously, after the backpacks from the video game Republic Commando. Shoutouts to Republic Commando. That's what the city I mayor is named after. It's named after, it's named after Sev from Republic Commando. Sev Mena. So, there you go. Alright, before we turn to Wald, let's go do what we need to do for Lotto. Which I believe... Wow, my dad pad's way over here. Uh, yep, yeah, right over here. You guys kissing? They must have just loaded out of the Moss Espa instance. It's one of the heroics or dungeons in the game. Not the crowd favorite. I need to use nades, because why not? This is another percent chop. Got it. I like how I have to keep killing thugs to get money to pay Wada back, and they're all looting. I'm looting credits from all of them, but I need the specific credit pouch, I guess. The credit ship. We'll delete those enzymes when we have a long drive ahead of us. Hmm. That's the other tip I wanted to talk about that reminded me. We'll do that after we do deal with this. Hey, look at Jedi. Not bad, not bad. You have my parts. They will think twice before stealing from me again, eh? Now, how about that information? What information is it you want? Don't play games with me, Watto. Ah, yes, the lost droid, you see. I broke it up. It's no more. What? You got a little blue flying, but I know where some of the parts went. If you get them for me, I can help you rebuild it. Where are the parts, Watto? I don't know where all of them are. I will find out. I do know the chassis was sold to Pegan. 
You can find him across town. Here's his address. Thanks. Yes, of course. Here's Walt. Welcome back. You have shown me that your skills are not underrated. I have two more tasks for you if you're interested. I can even pay you a little for your help this time. Whatever I can do to help out. Excellent. There are only two extra jobs left, so I'll let you choose which to do first. The first involves teaching a lesson to some punk kids here in Mos Espa. The other is a simple pickup of some merchandise for a customer of mine. I'm still interested. What's this about teaching kids a lesson? I always love education. There is a local gang of teens called the Laser Flits. Interesting, they name themselves as a creature native to Locke. They are a relatively new gang operating here out of Moss Espa. I have the location of their hideout. Recently, they ambushed a delivery of swoop parts we were delivering to a customer. There were 10 parts in all. I need you to recover these parts. Most likely, you'll find parts on these gang members. If you have to teach the kids a lesson to get the parts back, so I'll be... If you have to murder kids to get me my shit back, go ahead and do it. I guess you could roleplay it as is you're incapacitating them in big quotation marks. But Wald's like, go kill children for my stuff. All right. He could also just be using kids as a... I don't know how old Wald is. Maybe he thinks anyone under the age of 30 is a kid. Who knows? All right, that sounds easy. Once you find all 10 parts, there's a customer waiting on them in the bar at the Mos Espa Starport. He's also the man I am buying the engine parts from. I have a credit ship to pay for the engine, which are off an old Y-Wing model. How old? You need to give him the credit ship. You can certainly pick up some engine parts first and then handle the gang. I leave up to you. However, I'm paying you to do both together. Fair enough. Can I get the coordinates and credit ship then? I'd like to get started. All right, here's the chip and the coordinates. Come back here when you finish and I will pay you what I can. Okay. All right. So one, one tip that I wanted to deliver is, so say you got the flash speeder that I recommended you grab earlier, but you want to move around a little bit faster and you don't mind spending a small, very small amount of credits to do so. If we come over here to the bazaar, any bazaar terminal, Again, let's filter the entire galaxy, and let's go to D, Vehicle D. These are all the Vehicle Ds being sold on the bazaar throughout the galaxy right now. If you buy a swoop, you have a vehicle that has the highest top speed in the game. No modifications. 6,000 credits. I wonder if we could find a swoop for cheaper. Let's use our filters over here. Let's search for swoop. I get 5,500. 5, if that still feels a little high for you, you can always do vendor location and do the same thing. Deed, well, vehicle deed, swoop. 5,000, and maybe, I don't know, you're trying to see if there's anything under 5,000. You put max price 5,000. You know, let's do it even, let's be even smarter. Max max price 4,999. Wow, you can buy swoops for 500 credits. Is there anything below 500 credits? Nope. So if you wanted to buy the cheapest swoop in the galaxy and don't dri mind driving out to wherever this is on Tatooine, you could buy a swoop. Again, highest top max speed in the game are 500 credits from this player. I'd say that's worth the investment. There's so much time you spend driving around in this game. This will sell you, save you a ton of time. Alternatively, if you find your swoops being blown up, you can actually search by factory crate, search swoop, and you can just buy a crate of swoop deeds. This is a crate of five swoop deeds. You can buy five or 10K. So 2K a swoop. Uh, that's the old PvP strat on live. If your swoop blew up, you just take out another one. <laughs> it's cheaper than repairing it. Alright, so now that we did that, let's uh let's uh let's see. Let's go deal with the gang first over. Let's go deal with the laser flits. Alright, we leveled up to 21. That's right, I don't have anything to I'm like there's there's nothing I need to do for that. Can I squeeze through this back alley? Sick. Sick. <laughs> I love you, Jetpack. Alright, we don't even need the glucose anymore. We're level 18. Alright, so let's kill some kids to get um, ship parts back because that's what Wald told us to do. And as the leader we are, it's something that we will take under our belt. Again, excellent story writing here from SOE. I'm sure they mean kids as, like, 20s, right? I'm not actually killing 16-year-olds to get parts back. That'd be kind of petty and silly. Oh, this person. So sometimes you run into players like this where they're AFK farming um, spawns. You'll see this a lot through the Legacy Quest. 
if I send this person a tell, they should send me an invite. Yep, there it is. And you can accept it. That's the part of the rule here. So if I needed these NPCs for this quest, I can have them join my group. And then, you know, whatever they do is counting for whatever I need. But you'll see that the level disparity is there. So I wouldn't stay in a group like this. You won't get any XP. So we'll just leave the group. But just as an example, if you ever see someone AFKing like this and that's on something you need, just send them a tell. And they should be running a macro that, um... Why the fuck did they send me an invite? <laughs> they should be running a macro that automatically sends an invite. Oh, no. Oh, I, oh, their macro is weird. Maybe it'll fix itself. If, if I keep getting invites from them, I'm just going to block them. So, uh, you usually set up the macro so where you won't spam invites to the same person over and over again. I don't know how they have their macro set up, but I guess it's caching me as the last person. Okay, so we got all the sweet parts. We can leave here now. Okay. Hey, if they do it one more time, I'm just going to add ignore. <laughs> If you add someone to your ignore list, they can't send you group invites. You could also disable, you could automatically decline group invites you're sent through um, settings. Right, let's go retrieve these engine parts. So like any good airport, <laughs> the starport has a bar apparently. And that's where we will meet our contact over here. I don't know why that's in the floor, but he's certainly not in the floor. There he is. Damn, you tall, boy. What can I do for you? I'm waiting on delivery from Wald from Wado Shop. Yes, I'm waiting for delivery from Wald. I have those soup parts for you. Wonderful. I have transferred the appropriate credits to Wald's accounts. Wald said he is waiting for you back at his Wado Shop. I appreciate it. Have a great day. I have his credit chip for those engine parts. Excellent. I'll have the engine pods delivered at once. I don't suppose Wald sent you along with any sweet parts. I already gave you them, nerd. Oh, yeah, I got these to increase my stamina. Whatever, man. Let's talk to Watto first. Did you talk to Peg in yet? Oh, I forgot to do Watto's. All right, let's just talk to Wald since we're here. I was glad to help. And that's all he's got. Which Wald said, by the way, my customer has... Blah, 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 let me try the right quest. There we go. My customer has delivered payment of the engines on time. I cannot thank you enough, my friend. Wado is going to be, well, not angry at me, which is a good thing. I know this isn't much, but you have my gratitude as well. Perhaps that will count for something for you with you as well. Wow. And you paid us a bit. 870 credits. Definitely an amount that I don't give a shit about, but it's more than zero. That'd pay for, like, two shuttle tickets if I used the shuttle. Totally forgot to actually talk to this guy. Hi, what do you need? I am looking for a joint chassis you bought from Wada. What? Why would you leave me looking for that? Do you have the casing? No, it didn't work with the standard R2 components I had, so I threw it out. When was that? Just a couple of days ago, but it won't do you any good. The Jawas already came and sifted through the trash. The casing was one of the first things they took. Can you tell me where the Jawas went? Sure. So they're trading for it. Here are the directions. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Here's a drive. There is, there are some player um, transit centers where they have AT-AT travel heads to place it, like quest related places like this, like the Java traders. But I don't know off any off the top of my head, and I don't have any like quick transportation at the moment to any of those. So why would I bother? <laughs> uh, what I will do is, um, can I call a snow speeder here? No. Okay. Well, we'll we'll make a snow speeder location to the spot because I think we're gonna have to come back here. I need to drive a little bit away before I can call it. Alright, so let's talk to this droid. My master bids you good day and asks, why, what are you interested in buying? I'm here about a droid you salvaged from a trash pile of Mos Espa. My master requests that I inform you that anything he finds that has been discarded is his now. He does not have to return it. I'd be willing to purchase it from you. Indeed, that is a different case. What particular item were you interested in? A body casing from an R2 droid that was discarded there. Yes, this item is known to him. However, he does not have it any longer. Where is it now? 
Morasser sold it to a miner that had found a rich robonium survey to the north. Robomi? Robonium? That's almost as bad as unobtainium. Can you be more specific than that? His rebuilt R2 droid had one of our restraining bolts on it. My master believes he could find the droid's location using that. How long will it take? He's already done. Here's the location of the lost droid. Thank you. Good day, sir. <laughs> I like that this quest. It's called bodybuilding. So, at level 22, we'll uh, talk about a couple more things regarding armor. And uh, I'll be able to get, I guess, another point in lethal aim. Shruggy. <laughs> 5% more damage to sure shot. Yay. <laughs> Not every expertise point will be bumping. Like once we go to officer specialization, we'll have eight levels of just 25 more precision or yeah. Constitution is the better one. If you have these areas where it's like, oh, increase what stat do you want to increase? Eh, Constitution is usually the winner. Usually take on, never take stamina. If you take stamina, I'm putting a fratty face on your report card. On your gamer report card. I guess stamina wouldn't be terrible for leveling, but don't do it at 90. Okay, so here we are. Here's the wounded miner. No, please stop. You already have everything I own. Please let me live. I'm not here to hurt you. What? 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 Why are you here? Where are the Tuscans? The Tuscans are dead. I have killed them. I think it's too late for me. Everything is turning black. Well, that's depressing, but thanks for the droid chassis. There's the mining survey device. Watto says, you got the chassis? A woman here in Moss Espa bought the legs. Her name was, uh, Sindil, maybe. Anyway, she has her own problems she would like help with and will be connect contacting you soon. She gave me a speeder deed to give to you as payment up front for your help. Hello? You were the one who wanted to know about the droid legs I bought, right? Well, an Imperial captain just came and took them. My friend went after him and to get the legs back, but I haven't heard from him for a while. Last time he contacted me, he was at this position. It's a long way, so I had Wada send you a speeder to help you. I don't know how Wada operated a speeder in her hands, but whatever. I guess maybe he autopiloted it here. What I'm in. Why did this cannibal do back? Just aggro me from a football field away. What the? Was the server just really out of whack with where that thing was? What? Wow. All right. So like the XP 38, we could actually generate this vehicle. There it is. I love the look of this, this classic speeder bike. You probably all recognize it from Return of the Jedi. Uh, it is slower than a swoop and it's definitely slower than my jetpack. So we're not gonna be using it, but, but it is neat. All right, so we're gonna go out to the remote location where Sindel's friend is. So we got some driving ahead of us. I see the druid legs, but we gotta go to this waypoint first to get the update and meet the friend. So here's the waypoint. Eh. Which you can see, it looks like a, a ATST got destroyed here. Here's a down a pilot. Hey, who are you? What are you doing here? Your friend Sindel said me. She worried about you. She worries too much. What are you doing here? I saw the scout walker get blown up. Thought I would check out, check it for survivors. Uh, sure. Did you find any? No, I didn't even find any bodies. I think the Tuscan might have them. So what are you going to do now? Nothing. I'm not stupid enough to attack a Tuscan camp. I'm heading back. Good call. Take it easy on the way back. <laughs> yes, you too. Stupid enough. Uh, I'm a professional leader. That means I'm very good at murder. Out of my way. Whoa! Level 22. Sick. All right, now we gotta go back to Wada. Let's go back to Espa and then let's uh, see what level 22 brings us. So we're level 22 and what level 22 grants us is the ability to wear armor. This is for every profession, crafters, entertainers, Jedi. This applies to you as well. So at level 22, you get armor use. As an officer, I also got sure shock mark three. You also see we were given a set of armor. Cool. So this is the armor we're given. It has a stat of three constitution on it. And with all of these armors equipped at once in the set, we'll have 
a defensive value of 1,640 for each one. So if I bring over my character sheet and we start applying all these armors, you can see when I put the helmet on, we get 234. Now, armor parts don't apply armor uniformly. So if I put the chest piece on, you'll see we get 586. The chest piece gives you more armor than the other parts, which when you think about it, sure, that makes sense because, you know, square footage of your body, putting armor on makes sense at your chest. But I feel this is super overly complicated for an armoring system and kind of silly and leads to weird shit like... Uh, for the best in slot for smugglers is cybernetic legs, cybernetic arms, but then wearing an armor, a chest piece because of the extra armor that sh armor breastplate gives you. It's weird, but anyways, don't worry about that. But if I equip all these armor pieces, they'll each give me three constitution, and they'll give me all of these cool things. So what these armor values do is they'll mitigate a certain amount of damage. Um, based on the armor value you have and if it matches the damage type. So most damage types you'll receive are kinetic or energy based and they might have all, like additive elemental damages. This is more common at level 90 when fight fighting other players, but some creatures can do elemental damage. Some heroics and dungeons will have mechanics that do elemental damage. So for example, if you're doing X or Kuhn, um, the first boss and the third boss do a lot of electricity damage, I believe. You'll also see some elemental damage during the Kazash and Sinya uh, bosses, which are the Legends-specific giant theme park stuff and etc. Um, my uh, extra supply, uh, my, my own little stipend of inventory here, I already have, a, I already have some armor for myself, so we're just going to throw that on. Uh, it's a little, it's, you know, a little bit better. A, a little bit better. So I'm in full Rebel Assault armor. I don't need the gloves on or those boots. Um, so first of all, you'll notice that now my protection stats are up to 7,600 for kinetic, 5,600 for energy, and 5,400 for all the elementals. This is capped armor stats for an assault type armor. There are three types of armor. The one you get as a... Officer is a battle, and battle basically has even stats across the board. Assault armor favors kinetic at the sacrifice of some energy production. And the third type, reconnaissance, gives you extra energy at the sacrifice of kinetic protection. It's not that assault or reconnaissance have less, it's just that it's weighted differently. This armor also has layering built into it to change where the stats go. So Primus moves protection stats from heat, cold, acid, electricity to energy and kinetics so they have extra protection. So if this had no layering, all of my elemental protection would be 6,000, my kinetic would be 7,000, and my energy would be 5,000. But I moved 600 from this grouping over to here, basically. Because again, most damage types are getting are kinetic or energy based, so favoring those over the elemental bases is pref preferable. Um, if you wanted to buy an armor set for yourself, if you go over to the bazaar, and if you go to the vendor location tab, filter for entire galaxy, we're going to expand the miscellaneous box, and we're going to scroll down to wearable container, click wearable container, and in the item name filter, just enter armor as a word. And so this is how people commonly sell armor. They sell them in bags, and the bags should have at least 10, usually has 9 or 10 pieces in it, depending on the armor set. So an armor set can... Just, can typically composes of nine pieces. Those pieces, of course, being the helmet, the legs, the chest, the biceps and bracers, the gloves and the boots. The tenth item in the bag is usually a, uh, is usually a co color kit, so you can customize the armor. So like, you'll notice that my chest piece has a different color than my legs. Same with the boots. That's because uh, they're color-coded to a something else, which you'll see in a minute. But for example, this padded armor, so battle armor, has 6,000 kinetic protection, 6,000 energy, and 6,000 all the elements. So it's not weighted in any one way. Um, 2 million is quite a lot, though, especially for unweighted armor. So let's uh, reduce that price. Let's say 500k is my max. So if it has appearance, that means that they probably didn't do anything in the stats, so you don't want to buy that. Let's see here. Where can we get... Here we go. Here's some Tantal Reconnaissance Armor with a color kit for 300k. And this is going to give you capped stats 
that are not weighted. So you have 5,000 kinetic, 7,000 energy, and 6,000 elemental. Good. Perfect. 300k. Out of curiosity, let's see if there's anything else below 300k on the market right now. Probably not. 300k is usually about right for a cap set of armor. Yeah, so here's a, a set of bone armor. Oh, here you go. Here's a chitin. Chitin is a salt. For 200k, you get capped kinetic energy and elemental, and you might say, but burrito, these aren't weighted like you were talking about. You don't have the 7,600 connect. That's fine. This is going to be your starter armor set, and this is going to be leagues better than your your profession, and it is better than the Katarn armor that you can get later at level 50. But if you don't have the credits yet, or you want to save your credits, you don't have to buy this immediately. You can go do the Katarn armor quest when you get level 50, 55, etc. But I would recommend grabbing this. This will make you extremely more durable. Now for me, uh, this looks fine, I guess, but I, I wanted to spice it up a little bit. So I'm gonna equip some appearance items here. This is, by the way, is the Guavian Death Gang belt. You can get it from Bespin Holland and Arena. This is Legends Unique. It's one of the good belts that actually look good on this character. And, uh, oh right, I can't equip factional armor yet. How much, uh, so you don't have to be part of the faction to uh, keep, how do I put this? You ha so when it says faction restriction rebel, you actually do need to be on it. That was removed from a lot of things, but not this. Uh, so I'm not going to be wearing the full suit, my full outfit yet. Once we go back to Anchorhead, we'll, we'll become rebels and I'll put the rest on. I do look a little silly right now though, huh? But anyways, yeah, armor's kick ass. So now we're going to be very durable. All right, let's go back to Watto. Don't forget about that extra sure shot damage. Ah, you were able to find the legs after all. Yes, an Imperial captain confiscated them from Sindil. What? I want nothing to do with the Empire. Nothing but trouble. I didn't mention you, Watto. They're all dead anyways. Ah, that is good, I think. Dead men tell no tales, eh? Here's the money for the salvage anyway. Okay, now what about the motivator? Do you know where it is? I sold it as two different parts. The first one went to the man who wanted to race the Bunta Eve Classic Pog race track. I sold him. I told him he was crazy, but he would not listen. Hasn't that race been outlawed? For many years now, he said it would be no problem. He had sliced a new behavioral matrix into his R2 unit. All he needed from me was a high torque droid motivator, and I am, and the droid I am looking for had one. I that it did, so it sold to him at the special price. Very kind of you. And never you mind that. I found out a week later he had smashed up his pod on a canyon turn. Do you have the location for that wreck? How much time has passed from us leaving Tansari Point? Because that shipment was with Han, right? And he handed it off, and then it went through. But a week has passed? Whatever. Or is this a different shipment? Lost track. Why would you want that? There must be nothing left after all the looters. It's worth a look. Do you have the location? No, I don't, but I might know who does. Anne Kui is a swoop racer in Moss Antha. If she doesn't know where the wreck happened, she at least know who does. Why, Watto? You're being especially helpful. Eh, you bring me good parts. Cool. Fitness drink. Saying I'm looking pretty fit, Watto? All right. We gotta go over to Moss Entha, but I'm not liking like how I don't look I'm not really enjoying how I look right now, so let me just go join the Rebel Alliance. It was inevitable. I have enough faction now. I got 220. I think all you need is 200. Why are so many Anthas out here? Luckily about Moss Espa, even though it has a very build large no build radius, uh <laughs> that doesn't apply to ITVs for whatever reason. So we're just gonna whoop. A little shimmy down anger out really fast. So if you want to join a faction, you need 200 factional points. And then you just need to run over to a recruiter. So on um, Tatooine, there's one right here. Hello, friend. Is there something that I can do for you? Are you interested in helping free the peoples of the galaxy? I would like to be a rebel mercenary, which means you stay neutral, but you opt in to help the rebel alliance. There's also a command for that. 
I like to join your fight against the Empire, though, so we're going to become a rebel. It's not a decision to be taken lightly. Rebels are hunting across the galaxy. If you join us while you're an active combatant, Imperials will attack you on sight. But special for Imperial Special Forces players will leave you alone. Are you ready for that? That doesn't scare me. Down with the Empire. Superb. Welcome to Re Rebellion. Now we got a little rebel marker next to our name. Thank you very much. Yay, we're a rebel. Okay, I did that so I could equip my fucking things. In my appearance slots. Cool, now we're looking pretty metal. I'll store my inventory later. Alright, so now that we have that equipped, I'm gonna go to I wanna change my military status. What kind of change you're looking for? I need to go on leave for a time. We really need your skills. Are you sure you wanna go on leave? You will be overlooked by most Imperials unless you get stopped by a tenacious agent that finds something um linking you to us. Yes, so we need to take some leave for a while. Okay, so the reason I'm going back on leave is because when you join a faction, you immediately go to combatant, which means Imperial NPCs will shoot you. And we're going to be going in and out of Bastine, I think, a little bit more. So I'd rather just not have to worry about getting shot by Imperials, because Bastine's always held by Imperials. Um, so, you know, why bother with that? Screw that shit. Um, so we're going to flag down. It takes five minutes, but that's fine. But now we're looking fly. Again, this looks not completed as I'm missing my goggles, but I'll get those eventually when I feel like it. Just got a little entertainer a little bit. At some point, my officer buffs got turned off, and I don't know why. Let's reapply those. Oh, you know what? This is when I change my, uh, this is when I want to combatant. When you change lag status, your buffs need to be reapplied. Your fat, your officer buffs, don't worry about it for other stuff. Oh, there's a bunch of stormtroopers around here. So this is Anqui. What can I do for you? Watto said you might know where a certain droid motivator might be located. Why would I know anything about a droid motivator? He said you knew someone that used to help him run a pod r racer through an old track. Pod racing is illegal. Of course it is. So you don't know any racers, not even super racers. Maybe. Talk to Drachnus about running some test tracks. If you finish them, we'll see about any droid motivators we may have might have laying around. I could do that. Tell me where he is. You can find him here. All right, so we got to go prove that we're a skilled speeder pilot. <laughs> Anqui says you can race, Vumbalomo. I'll have to see for myself. I don't know you, so I'm going to give you an easy race. It will not take long, and we will see soon enough if you can follow a course. That won't be a problem. Excellent. At least you talk as if you were a speeder pirate. We shall see, no? Let's go, Drachnus. I want to race now, as you wish. Alright, so we gotta go. He's gonna send us to race droid. We're gonna have to do, I think, a couple of races here. This is the easiest one. Races in Star Wars Galaxies are pretty simple. Basically, you start a race, and then there's a timer, and there's a series of waypoints that you have to reach. Um, the only way to do this race any faster is just to have a faster speeder. <laughs> Speaking of pissed off Imperials. Yeah, you want to go? You don't want to fight me. I'm kind of scary. Told you. How much damage are you even doing to me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got Sure Shot Mark Three. I know I mentioned that earlier, but... Hit me for 136 points out of 315 because my armor absorbed half of the damage. Shouts to you, armor. Are you ready to start the race? Yes. Begin. Usually I recommend having your speeder out since we're, since we're running with a jetpack. I can't have the speeder out. I could use the speeder bike for this. I'm pretty sure as long as you're running something as fast as the speeder bike deed you get from the previous quest, you'll probably be fine. There are race coordinator droids placed throughout some of the cities. I believe Mont's Entha has one, maybe. I know Kermin has one. And those are linked to challenge, uh, collections or badges? I think it's badges. I think it's like just get the best time, and I think the taunt leaderboard resets like every day or something. Or every week, I don't remember. Pretty easy to do. So this one's pretty easy. It just has us go around basically the um, outside of the city. If for whatever reason you don't succeed, you just do it again. I 
I've never done this in a flash speeder or XP38. Those might be too slow. I don't know. Good thing I flagged down. These guys are high level. 35? Well, high level compared to my current level. Gear can only make up so much in terms of level gap. There's a lot of base stats taken into consideration when level gaps come into play. You are marked as successfully completing this race. Speak to your race giver for your next race. Goodbye. Good luck, sir. Excuse me? Good luck, sir. I'm a ma'am. Thank you very much. This is a problem writing dialogue right that. Congratulations, Von Bolomo. You have completed the first race. As I indicated earlier, the race was only a beginner's test. I'm guessing you have more races in store for me. At least one more. Another test? Why don't we get to the real thing? This race is a bit more difficult than the first. You may need to repeat it. Okay. I'll keep that in mind, dude. Alright, RC2X. Are you ready to start the race? Yes. At least this one doesn't give me any fucking lip. Just do it. Alright, looks like this one's gonna go through the city a little bit. When you're racing through the city, having the overhead map up is obviously, uh, you know, kind of handy. It's because you can see where the waypoint appears on it. And if there's anything in your way. There's a lot of uh, low to medium high walls in Entha. So the jetpack might prove useful for some of those. We will see. I don't know yet. Right now, all the walls have been too high for me to eat anything. Wow, we're already done. This was much shorter. You are marked as successfully completing this race. Speak to your race giver for your next race. Goodbye. Good luck, sir. Excuse me? It's madam to you? Alright, Drachnus. Well done, that was fine work. Thank you. Do you have any other challenges for me? Indeed I do. One final race. It will, it will test you more than either of the first two races. You would do well to complete it on your first try. No problem, just play me to their race timer. Once with such bravado has no need of luck. But I wish it yours regardless. Wow. Fun fact about the Madam Sir thing. Not a fact, just a coincidence. I went to the store the other day, and I have the guy who was working the... um. Uh, Chuck, Chucker. Uh, I like returned a hand basket to them so that they, he didn't have to go pick it up. And he went, Oh, thanks. Uh, I was like, Sure. And then I was kind of autopilot. He's like, Have a great day, ma'am. And I'm like, Yeah, you. And I stopped and I stared at him for a second. And he just, he laughed. And I looked to my right. A woman was leaving behind me. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, <laughs> RC3T. Are you ready to start the race? Yes. Begin. Wow. I love, I love the brevity of the conversation there. I'll have to reply my officer buffs again since I flagged down to leave. But luckily, none of these really affect my movements, so. Ten seconds left. Oh no, I'll never make it. Your mark is complete. Speak with your race giver. Yeah. I know, sir. I like how you get swoop faction standing because they're impressed by your racing skills. Cracks me up. I gotta go to Drachnus first. Why is it not? Whatever. Why did they give me a waypoint to Anqui? It appears you're quite the racer after all. Please return to Anqui with my compliments. Your tests were quite entertaining. So what? So you will tell her I'm a good racer? I will and more. You have done well today, Bum Volomo. Great, I'll head back to her. I will calm her that you are going to be arriving and tell her how much I enjoyed your exciting races. I'm glad you were psyched about it. I made somebody happy. So it seems you can handle Speeder after all. We were discussing the location of the droid motivator. Ah, yes, you can find the wreck of this pod racer here. I think you will find the motivator still in this ruined droid. Apparently, the programming he installed in it, the little droid didn't help him as much as he thought it would. Thank you, I'll go collect that part now. Be careful, Tuscans have been seen in that area. I don't have a better knife I could be using, right? 26 is my next knife.
I've been... The lowest level weapon you can craft is a level 18 weapon for some reason. Minus the decorative survival knife. If that counts. Um, so, basically I just made a level 18 weapon and then every 8 levels I um, made another one up until like level 70, up until level 80 and then I made it 6 levels so I bridge. Because 80 to 88 is a while so 80 to 86 feels a little bit more comfy. Okay. Oh wow, Tuscans again. Whatever. I'm out of range. Can I activate these all? I can, wow. Combat is interrupted. You son of a bitch. I feel like I'm gonna have to come back out here for another quest. Mmm. Do I wanna overwrite? Nah. We'll delete it. I'll just regret it later. It's fine. All right, now we can go back to Watto. All right, Watto. You were able to find the part, eh? I found its motivator. I was also able to bring you more salvage. Yes, this is very nice. Good work. Here, take this. Also, I found the ones that bought the booster controller for the droids motivator, but I warn you, they are strange ones. I've met plenty of strange ones already. Yes, they are in the slums. Here's location. One of them left his swoop bike here as collateral, but never paid. If you can get that part back, I will throw in the swoop bike as well. Thanks. Don't say I didn't warn you, Outlander. Apparently I'm an Outlander now. I'm going to repo this speeder now. Apparently he didn't want me touching his speeder. So I'm going to throw a grenade on him for flexing. I'm going to kill your whole family. I'd say put some pants on, but you are on a desert planet, so... I get it. Sand gets everywhere anyways. This, this is one problem with the jetpack, though. I'm trying to fly through here, but this low ceiling's cock-blocking me. <laughs> uh, so there is that to worry about sometimes. Very rare, but it exists. Alright, Waddle, well, I'm back. Very good. You have the Booster. And the next part is the diagnostic controller without the droid. The droid will not self-correct and will deviate from the normal behavior within minutes. Where can I find the diagnostic controller? That's the tough part. I sold it to a man who said he was looking for someone he thought was lost in the squill caves. What are squill caves? Humanoid animals. They are vicious and cruel. You should be very careful if you try to recover this part. I will be careful. Just give me the location. Okay, the cave is very likely your grave. The cave and very likely your grave can be found here. Thanks for the optimism. And leave me alone. And then we can get some classic weapons. So, from that most recent quest, we've got the infrared binoculars. This is a, a reusable buff item that we will be keeping and using. The infrared binoculars is one of the buff items that um, occupies a slot that better buffs that we'll get later on in the game we'll be using over. But for leveling, it's nice to have. It's a very consistent buff. And it gives you 5 precision and 5 strength, which is more than 0. It also gives you a 10 points to detect stealth targets, but really, there's no NPCs that do that outside of, like, some droids in Droid Factory 2, which, again, I don't, I don't even think detection matters. The only time you'd ever have the detection ability is if you're trying to find a spy in a duel or PvP, other PvP scenario. There's no situation I can think of where you would uh, need detection stats. Alright, so we gotta go to the Swill Cave. I think uh, we're gonna go to Barter Town, though. That, that's a player city. The other thing that's good about the armor that I equipped is I crafted this armor myself. Not only does it have all these good stats, but it has more of these exotic stats I talked about earlier. And it also has more base attributes on the other armor pieces. So, for example, I'm getting Agility Luck Strength from this one. Agility Luck Precision from this one. Uh, there's a reason I split the stats on these basic attributes for experienced players. Like, why'd you did that? It's going to be for a very specific, weird solo cheese thing. I wouldn't suggest doing these stats. If you're going to do melee officer, do something like... I mean, you should just do constitution, luck, agility. 
but if you really want more damage, you could throw strength in there. Keep constitution, don't dump con. I'm being a goofball by doing that, but I'm just trying something weird and dumb, alright? It's definitely dumb. Uh, we could talk about build theory more when I get further into the levels, because right now it wouldn't make any sense. It won't make sense until I'm a higher level. Not quite 90, but more. Oh! I got the bark speeder. Cool. Did we get that from that last quest? Yeah, I guess we did. So, th the Legends uh, stat... Okay. The Legend staff moved a lot of um, reward items that you usually used to get from the claim window behind quests. So we got the Bark Speeder from actually one of the Watto quests. I think it was the one I just completed about repossessing parts. Instead of getting a swoop, he gave us a Bark. No, it was from the previous quest. Uh, the quest where we uh, got... Um... Oh, from racing. From completing all the races and getting the droid motivator back. That's where we got the bark speeder from. So, cool. Uh, bark speeder's pretty cool. Uh, I like it a lot. I'm not going to redeem this right now, though. Probably hold on to that for something else. But, bark speed's cool. Alright, so we gotta go recover the droid. So, squills are ugly as hell. So, if we go left... Uh, we would run into, I think this is where the que quest item we need is. I'm just going to ignore these squill. If they want to fight, they can come get one. Okay, yeah. So we enter the cave, go left, run all the way down here. You'll find the droid part you need. Luckily, we're high enough level where most of these squill don't want to mess with us. If we were a little bit lower level, they'd be a little bit more tempted to attack us. As aggression rating uh, and relative level does matter. So here's the droid diagnostic controller. Let's walk over. Stop. Click on it. This is a hermit. And then a collection item, the bloodshot ripper there. This, he will give you a quest that I believe is ready for level 50. We're going to come back and grab it later. I would recommend grabbing it now while you're here. But I want to make sure that I show it in one full go. So I'm going to wait to pick that up. But we got to run back out of here now. I'm pretty happy with how this looks on her, by the way. The bracers and the left bicep is from the Rebel Prototype Armor, which is a Bespin reward. Same with the pants. The right bicep is Marauder Armor. I believe it's the Reconnaissance variant. The boots are Padded Armor boots. It's just, man, Padded Armor boots just look so good. It's hard to, like, pass, like, not take them. Chest is Rebel Assault Armor. Backpacks for Public Commando again. It's a good look. I posted this look in my Discord a little while ago. So buff items can still be activated from your backpack. So I'm going to keep these infrared binoculars in here. I believe they give us more toxic weapon spray. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's more. Alright, so we get to pick a reward. Sword, please. And we're level 24. Amazing Outlander. It, this is quite an achievement, eh? Thanks, it wasn't easy. Well, it's not over yet. I found the head, but you're not going to like where it is, I think. What do you mean? I sold it to Jabba the Hutt. Great. So who do I have to talk to? I just told you, Outlander. You must talk to Jabba. This is not good. It is not good for you, eh? Jabba will not be that easy to get to. I didn't think he would be. Oh, we got tracking the head, because we need the head of the droid. It's the last part, and Jabba's got his hands on it. Let's see, how good is the classic sword? Compared to what we're already wielding. Slightly better. Lower max damage, but higher average. Sure, why not? And I can't... I can't sell this Vibroblade. It's biolink to me, and I can't sell to the junk dealer, so away it goes. We did a lot today, huh? We uh, left hand sorry. We got some. Did some. We did a lot today. We left hand sorry. We went over some stuff for getting started. Let's see, what else did we do? Uh, we did a lot of quests. We did basically everything in the Isley. We started. We sided with the rebels. We were helping the rebels out. 
We helped Waddle out. Now we gotta go find and meet Jabba the Hutt, but to talk to the head, we gotta do a whole Jabba's theme park, and that's gonna be a hoot. Luckily, we got this Bark Speeder from Watto, so that helps boost morale. But we're level 24, so 14 levels of progress in one day, considering I was stopping to smell the roses. That's pretty good. But that's gonna have to be it for this time, everybody. Thank you very much for hanging out and watching. Appreciate you being here always. Next time, like I said, we'll be doing Jabba's theme park. And maybe you'll be able to even maybe start Naboo. I don't remember how long the Java segment's going to take. But after that, let's go to Naboo.